Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Three Gun Show. I'm your host, Dave Hartman. This is the 200th edition of the Three Gun Show, and we recorded this one live at the 5th Annual Jeff Kirkwall Memorial Three Gun Benefiting Task Force Dagger. If you're new here, I'm a passionate three gunner myself, and the Three Gun Show is a weekly podcast featuring long-form interviews with awesome shooters, reports from major matches that we call Match Recon, and all the other great things about the practical shooting culture, including shoot-offs like this one. This podcast is also brought to you by LAG Tactical. I've been using LAG mag pouches and holsters for years, ever since uh, James Casanova introduced me to their Nova holsters and their first-generation competition mag pouches. They have a new design for mag pouches out now in the MCS, the Modular Carry System, which features a two-piece design and fits a wide variety of pistol mags as well as different brands of AR mags. I got to see the prototypes in action when Scott Green won the Lucas Oil PCC Championship I'm excited to run them myself. Check them out at lagtactical.com. This podcast is brought to you by Armalite, the original. Armalite rifles put the AR in AR-15. The rifles themselves come with 1 and 8 twist barrels, match barrels 18 inch or 13 and a half inch with a uh, 15 inch or 12 and a half inch handguard. Timney trigger, Luth AR stock, adjustable uh, gas system, tunable comp, a patented tunable comp, This thing's ready to go right out of the box for a three gun with no additional modifications other than putting on a nice optic. I myself use a Vortex Viper PST 1 to 6 when I'm shooting TAC Ops or their Spitfire when I'm shooting Limited. Check them out at Armalite.com. Welcome, everybody, to the three gun show. As I record this, I am packing my bags, or maybe I will be in a minute here, but I'm packing my bags to head to. TriggerCon in Washington. Uh, I'm going to be there working the booth with the good folks from Vortex Optics. So if you're going to come by, say hey. Uh, I'll have some uh, three gun show stickers with me and uh, maybe some magnets. Whatever kind of swag I can get, I'll give you. But yeah, stop by the Vortex Optics booth. I'll be there with uh, with the crew and definitely some of the people that you'll hear in this podcast here. And. You'll also hear us talking about rifling a JP rifle with a Vortex Optics Viper PST 1-6 to uh, in this podcast, and we're still doing that. Uh, it's being done online via Practice Score, and this is pretty cool. So because we're doing it on Practice Score, it's linked with Task Force Dagger's uh, bank account, right? So anytime you enter, which is uh, only 20 bucks, uh, the money goes directly to the Task Force Dagger Foundation and the rifle is sitting at uh, Arms and Arms, and they are going to mail it to the the FFL of your choice if you're the lucky winner. So entries are twenty bucks. Buy as many as you can because uh, all the money goes to Task Force Dagger. And again, there's a link in the show notes: threegunshow.com/episode200, and uh, enter away. It'll be good. Now on to the show. So one of the great things that I get to do from time to time and I really enjoy is to call action live from shoot offs. We've done this a couple times in three gun nation shoot offs. Uh, last year, the Jeff Kirkwood Memorial match and uh, generation three guns. So it's always a good time this year. I was asked to come back to the Jeff Kirkwood Memorial match. And I had a great co-host on this one. Travis Vogel from vortex optics uh, really took the reins when I was shooting and uh, just a wonderful uh, co-host. Can't thank Travis enough for everything that he did. We also had a bunch of cool guests. So we had uh, Riley Croft from Texas, Dakota Overland from Minnesota, Ben Peterson of Hyperfire, Garrett Grover of Rise Armament, and Dustin Sanchez of JP Rifles. Uh, some really great stuff came uh, came out of those guests and a lot of, lot of fun. And um, it's going to develop into additional podcasts later on for your enjoyment. So that's how we do it here at the Three Gun Show. Now, enjoy the Grunt Style Live Show from the 5th Annual Jeff Kirkwall Memorial 3-Gun Benefiting the Task Force Dagger Foundation. All right, welcome everybody to the 3-Gun Show. We are at Jeff Kirkwall Memorial Match 2018, 5th Annual, and today is Range Day. 
Yeah, we are out on Forest Lake Sportsman's Club. I'm Dave Hartman. With you, with me is Travis Vogel, and uh, we're here to call the action. And this is round two in our first bout. We are looking at Nathan Payne and Mike Himmel already to the line, already getting ready. Fired up. Yeah, buddy, making ready. Uh, I'm, where's where's Jake Latola? He should be holding an umbrella over Nathan Payne right now. Apparently that's just part of the make ready. You guys do take good care of each other. I appreciate that. So up after this, just in case anybody's curious, is John uh, Weebush and Dakota Overland. So we had a, a whole first round of, uh, of action already. This has been just a kick in the pants. This is a very unique uh, match for those uh, those listening at home. We shoot five stages on Saturday, and on Sunday everyone uh, is seated into a bracket and shoots off. And uh, we're going hot with uh, Nathan Payne and Mike Kimmel right now. Both of them are going to Ooh. pistol first. We have an array of seven targets. Six targets. Feels like seven. Nate was on oh, it onto the pistol really fast, there, Dave. Yep. Nate's done with the uh, shotgun. Mike's picking up his shotgun here. Nate is down on uh, reverse kneel, and he's going after a six, six plate plate rack and a rifle stop plate. Nathan is now done. Mike is finishing out his uh, array. Nate looks smooth. Mike uh, m left up a plate on the plate rack for the uh, rifle, finished his uh, finished with a stop plate before getting all his uh, his plates. So we, to describe the uh, arrays to the audience, we're starting out with uh, six gunfighter targets on the on the ends, and this is like a mirror image. So six gunfighter targets, four inch by eight inch uh, plates, and uh, people are shooting pistol on those in tack. We have eight by eights, six of those in the center that are shotgun, and then uh, downrange, about 70 yards, would you say, Travis? Yeah, yep. About 70 yards, we have six hex plates, uh, gunfighter targets, plates ra plate racks, and then a rifle stop plate, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. We, I remember when Adam requested that, Carl was uh, a little uh, uh, unsure of what the goal was, and uh, when we got one pull rope to pull him back up, and it's a really cool apparatus, and it's one of those things that you know you don't, we don't really do very often. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So we have uh, um, all of the shooters in the uh, in the first day of the match are here, minus a couple stragglers that uh, maybe had a little too much fun last night. What do they do? Go out on snow sleds here in Minnesota? Is that what they do at night? <laughs> uh, snow when it's 90 at, at night is probably right, the possible yeah. neighbor. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> it's, uh, it's humid enough, though, if it were cold, it would snow. <laughs> So what's our next bout here? We've got a couple people Riley's actually ready. sitting next to me um, real quickly asking, what's a snowstorm? <laughs> and uh, I don't blame the Texan, but uh, we have John uh, Weebush, Weebush and Dakota Overland. Um, Dakota's on the left. John's on the right. Uh, Dakota's Dakota. waving to us. Hey. Uh, after this, we have Jake Berry and Corey Thack Thatcher. And then Patham and – you're just Patham, brother. Uh, and <laughs> Sam Monson. Are up after that, and then we're going to switch over to do some two by four. Exciting stuff! So yeah, this uh, this match has two divisions: tack ops, tr um, which uh, I run limited. So uh, there's several other people running limited out here as well. But I don't uh, think we get a deficit. We all get nah. We all get tossed in attack, and then uh, two by four is your open division. Full blown two by four open. Uh, absolutely, it's a good time. Uh, so in this case, for Josh Freilich, it's all the dots. <laughs> dots on dots on dots. Two Freilich dots, one on the shotgun, one on the PCC. <laughs> yeah, Josh. <laughs> so uh, to, to lay out the bay uh, a little uh, as well for the listeners, we've got uh, everybody's roughly, what would you say, 15 yards from the center line offset? That sounds about right. Yeah. And then uh, our favorite Shooting photographer. boxes. Yep. With uh, two of the 45 boxes and a pistol and a pistol dump underneath. So. You know what I like about this is it's a classic shoot-off style where the uh, shooters start in the same box. Uh, in this match, they are uh, touching fists, like yep. in a fist bump fashion, yep. and then uh, race to the the uh, staging boxes where the shotgun and the uh, rifle are. Pistol is holstered. Yep. And Dakota's off. John is off. Dakota's three plates into the plate. So is John. John finishes first, but it's close now. Dakota's got the shotgun up. Ooh. John off the shotgun first. 
Gets that first round on the rifle first, going to the plate rack. And John finished first by like two plates. Man, I tell you, it's almost hard to announce they're moving so quickly. <laughs> Dakota was on the pistol first, but uh, had some makeups, and John just smashed through the shotgun plates through it pretty solid. Definitely. All right, so John moves on on that one. Yep. And Dakota heads over to the uh, second chance bay, I believe. Uh, I don't think so, actually, at this Is point. Is that just the first round? First round, All yeah. right. So Jake Berry and Corey Thatcher is up, and then uh, Patham and Sam Monson. And then, like I said, we're going to do some two-by-four. So to uh, catch people up, we did go through the, uh, the first round of the match here. Uh, everyone that lost in the first round gets to go over to the second chance bay where a different – uh, shoot-off course is uh, set up, and then uh, the winner of that will come back here and face the winner of the of this shoot-off, which is kind of a kind of a cool format. Per division, too, I believe. Yeah, for, yeah. For two for by a, four and tech ops for a double elimination or a single elimination. If you're the guy who played the right way, if you will. Yep. The exactly. guy take the hard road. He's got two more wins, and he takes he takes first, which is an awesome way to uh, you know bring it back if you're really if you're really scrapping. Right. So we've got uh, Jake Berry and is that Lacey? That's Corey. Corey? <laughs> Good Lord, dude. We need to work on your handwriting. That is Corey. Corey Thatcher. Yep. Dave's picking on me, and uh, <laughs> I, I have to say that uh, I have seen his handwriting, and uh, I don't feel that is a fair Yeah, ours are e equally bad, but Actually, uh, I know how my handwriting is. So. <laughs> I know mine. It's bad, so I know it. There is a ton of Vortex Optics in this match, by the way. Um Mid, uh, gentleman on the left shooting uh, Huey. Yeah. Gentleman on the right shooting Viper PST. Minnesota uh, has been an extremely wonderful place uh, for the Vortex Optics brand. And, uh, Absolutely. The teams, the nation, is strong. the nation is strong up here. Yeah, Riley, you can't talk unless you're on the mic, so pick that up, buddy. Yeah, get buddy, get in here. He's over here jacking at us like we can actually hear him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I think there's something there. You got this, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a rotary phone. He'll never. He'll Microphones okay. are contemporary. So get hey, that. I know, I know how to work rotary phones. Move that uh, mic up close to your soup cooler there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Riley, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? There's the enthusiasm. Awesome. Awesome. I know Riley for Riley Croft, Texan, far from home. <laughs> Have you told your mom thank you today? By the way, I did. I okay, did. Good man. Good man. Hey mom. Mom. She's down there. This makes good radio. Oh, there so. she is. Thank you, mom. <laughs> All right, so our bout is up. Yep. Jake and uh, Corey. What, Dave? <laughs> All right, decisive lead on the uh, shotgun here for guy in the right. And now they're even on the rifle. We were ahead by six shotgun targets. I tell you, it even doesn't matter what the first six oh. 12 plates do. Oh. All right. Now the uh, we've got a winner by two plates here. And we have no idea. Unfortunately, I we can don't. only know so many people. Yeah. Somebody shout that guy's name. Guy on the right. Hey, Chad, who's your shooter? Thank Corey. you. Corey. Corey, Corey with the one. win. Congratulations, Corey. I'm going to rewrite this so it's clean, Dave. Crystal, thank you for pointing at him, but that doesn't help us know his name. <laughs> 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 Up next, we have Patham and Sam Monson. There we go. If you are shooting two by four, Josh Freilich or Robert Gale, please report to the paddock of shooters. Caught the paddock, by the way. I decided it. I like that. Yeah. Wow. We got some. Yeah. Right, we got some race. State the staging lanes. Yeah. I got the not, the head nod for Maxwell before on that. So awesome. So we got Patham and Sam Munson. Awesome. Yep. It's gonna be a good one here. And then Kevin Harrington is up after those guys after Josh and uh, Robert shoots. So Patham he's looking ready. So. On deck, we got a two by four. We got Josh Freilich and Robert Gale. Yep. Well, we're moving back to uh, Kevin Harrington and Evan Nichols. Very cool. Do you know how to pronounce uh, Patham's last name? 
I don't. Nor path do, and K. I don't path ever want to slaughter it out of respect, so I would rather just Path and K. I like to say how it's spelled, and he tells me I still get it wrong. So <laughs> There's a lot of letters there. He does have a nice shotgun, though. He does. He does. The funny thing about Patham is he only ever tells me I get his name wrong. He never corrects me on exact sp exact pronunciation. So <laughs> keep trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> certainly trying. <laughs> so Dave, we haven't actually talked about how this year it's not raining yet. Yeah, this is amazing. We I'm a uh, I got to. here on the uh, first day. I drove all the way through from Colorado, 15-hour drive. Got to the uh, the bay here. Saw the sweet uh, knockdown target, and then all of a sudden I uh, felt like I had to take a nap. Went and uh, slept on the floor in the pole barn with the dog. <laughs> hey, I did that the last two nights. <laughs> yeah. And uh, woke up, and uh, the skies unleashed, and it was raining massively. But uh, during the uh, matches, it had been absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. I actually drove through the same storm uh, on my way in that, after that evening. Incredible. It was uh, unsafe, to say the least. <laughs> Patham still getting ready down there. Yeah. Riley, what's the uh, what's the strategy on staging your guns? Do you have like a certain way that you like to set up your uh, your guns in the draw boxes here? These are kind of MGM style draw boxes for those uh, listening at home. Yeah. So on my rifle, I like to uh, stage it the far right and kind of hook the mag on the side there, so I can just grab it with my right hand and in the left or the right dump here in this case. Uh, yeah, because these well, are I shot on the right side, so I put mine okay. on the left. Okay. okay. I got you. Yeah, because there is a uh, berm that's hiding the uh, pistol targets that you kind of got to work work out for. So Sam goes for the uh, shotgun targets first, lays them down, now moves to the pistol. Patham is still wailing through the uh, pistol targets, just gets down his pistol array onto uh, shotgun here. Sam's, Sam's on down rifle. on the rifle first. Patham gets down on the rifle now. Sam's letting rounds go first. Ooh, now it's even. Even. Patham's got the far right oh. plate. Comes down oh. to the stop plate oh. here. Oh, oh Sam wow. just gets under. That was cool. That was a close one. Yeah, Sam shooting on the left side had the right hand plate in the plate rack uh, left and then the yeah. knockover. And Patham actually had to work his way all the way to the right of the right hand plate rack. Um, then come all the way back. And he got him. He had to transition back from that far right plate. This game is exciting when it comes down to the, uh, the stop plate. Uh, maybe next year we only shoot the stop plate. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to, uh, you know, make people uh, make people work for it until the stop plate there, Dave? Well, we'll start running at the pole barn. <laughs> <laughs> it'll so just it's be a, a, sprint. a foot, r foot race to the stop plate, and you speaking just have to karate chop it. Speaking of foot race, I saw a couple of resetting races earlier today. Yeah, and uh, Riley's Riley on the uh, on the game with the re the resetting. He was uh, not only on the game; he was racing a uh, significantly larger human being, <laughs> um, racing Josh Freilich, and. Uh, it looked like Josh uh, edged you out a couple times there, bud. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what it's happens off the podcast stays <laughs> off the podcast. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of a dangerous game uh, racing someone larger than you because if you beat oh, him, yeah. he still has to slow down. That is very is that true. Like I had to look back once. Sponsors? What's that? Is that kind of like beating your Patreon sponsors? Yeah, good point. <laughs> I, uh, I beat Eric Wilson on that, and uh, he busted out his uh, smartphone and started canceling his Patreon support right away. <laughs> I don't recommend funny. that as a course of action no. for anyone, but uh, I at least got to you know, give credit where credit's due to uh, Dave's. Uh, so we have Josh Freilich here, and who else? I didn't look at the bracket. Robert Gale. Robert, Robert Gale. Gale. Yeah. The JF up against uh, Robert Gale. So BJF. Odd thing that that happens here in 2 by 4 is uh, I, I guess they just throw out all rules and sanity, so they actually shoot the pistol targets with their shotgun, which uh, makes no sense whatsoever. Hey, but hey, uh, hey. we are running UML rules, so it's minimum two guns, there, so they don't have to use their pistol. So these guys just load up a, a big box and then wail on all these targets, which makes those 4 by 8 targets much, much easier to, oh, yeah. to shoot. Well, uh, you know, I think it came down to a safety thing. Um, with the range location here. No, I don't think so because <laughs> those are still behind. I got to shoot them with a pistol. That's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> those ones, Dave. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the ones on the right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Four by eights are a lot more fun with a shotgun. Yes, that is correct. Four by ten? Four by ten. Ooh. Carl's given us uh, actual measurements of the targets. I appreciate that. What's the tolerance on that, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> They're bigger. He's being more generous with us. <laughs> look, they look like eight when you're actually shooting them. All right, yeah. it looks like Josh. They feel is like ready. two by eights. Yeah. Got to get them knuckles. 
Oh, he gives that a, is fist one, bump that is yeah. a fist bump. Oh, yeah, that fist is one thing before cool. the fist bump. Uh, Adam last year had talked about if anybody leaves early, you they, you know because yeah. they're no longer touching your hand. Mm -hmm. Very true. So there's no false start in this game. Josh is off the first array. He's putting the shotgun. John down. gets a or John, <laughs> what's that guy's name? Josh gets a uh, three plate lead on the uh, on the shotgun. Robert has a malfunction on the shotgun here, yeah. and uh, he's working through it. Looks like Josh is done. As Josh finishes Josh the uh, play rack. Cleans it up. Man. Robert has a de death Wonder jam, pulled some uh, uh, piece of the shotgun outside of the shotgun. That's never good. Mm -mm. And uh, that round was brought to you by Keltec. Keltec's one of the sponsors of the match. They did something a little different, though, which was kind of cool. Um, with, uh, with this match... There's a, it is a charity event, and uh, Caltech actually um, chose to pay for the travel of a couple of uh, TFD-supported uh, soldiers and Marines uh, to uh, come up on up here and compete. That's great. That's awesome. Which, uh, you know, is one of those things that for a, a, such an organization that is extremely concerned with being responsible with the money that they generate, mm -hmm. Caltech making that happen for guys really allows that experience to continue to grow. That's one of the things I like about uh, Task Force Dagger is that they are very uh, responsible with the money that they uh, create uh, through this, and that it, it does actually go where it's intended rather than uh, uh, extraneous expenditures, which is something that we always look for when we have uh, um, charities on our uh, on our sites. All right, so this next bout up here is Kevin Harrington and Evan Nichols. And uh, I'm being told I need to go make ready. So uh, I'm going to turn this one over to Dakota. Dakota, you want to come join Heck us here? yeah. You put me between them. I like this. Kevin Harrington's on the left. Evan Nichols on the right. Evan has a pretty epic shirt, not going to lie. I haven't looked at it. Oh, man. you got to see it when he walks back. you got to describe it to me, buddy. Oh There's, we're on the radio, remember? Yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. It's a uh, hey majestic bald eagle, I should oh, say. Oh, outstanding! I have seen that shirt. Now that you say it that, is I, very I, majestic. I have seen that. It is, it is majestic. Do you know what my spirit animal is, by the way? I'm hoping it's a bald eagle. It is a butterfly mixed with a bald eagle. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know how. See, to that got a lot of heads to turn. Du Dustin uh, Felix is unsure of your decision here, bud. That's okay. Dustin's always unsure of me, though. So. He's acting like he's not listening, but he is. <laughs> I, I don't think they could avoid listening to oh, us. No. <laughs> By the way, hi, Dakota. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How'd your first shoot go? Um, the first one went okay. And this last one? Um, I had a, I struggled on the pistol yeah. a lot. <laughs> Whoops. Standing on the sun doesn't make it any easier. Nope. Looks like Crystal's making fun of you down there. It's okay, pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> so they're about to go nux up here to each other. Oh yeah. And they're off. Both went pistol Both. right away. Yeah. Evans four plates up on the uh Evans off the pistol on the shotgun. Yep. Oh had to remount for that last shotgun target. And he's on the rifle. The whole thing starts over when we get on the rifle. Oh, yeah. Kevin now catching up on the plate oh rack. No. He went 2 3. Now it's 1 2. It Kevin up. Oh. It it's going to be a close one. Oh, looks Kevin, like Kevin hits it. It looks like Kevin wow. got his. Yep. Wow. Kevin, Kevin caught up makes fast. A comeback. Looks like his first shot was an edge target. I thought it was down, but yep. he had to put another makeup on it. Yep. Looks like it didn't move quite as far as it needed to, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it's already really got the job done. Those first 12 targets. Oh, it's yeah. kind of a precursor to the actual game, it seems like. Everyone as soon ends as up even on that plate rack. Yeah, because guys, I mean, uh, Evan was, what, a couple, couple plates ahead, three, four? Yeah. And then uh, pulled two shots on the plate rack, and the next thing you know, Kevin's winning it. Next, we actually have Michael O'Brien and our very own Dave Hartman. Dave Which side's Hartman. Dave going to take? It looks like he's headed to the right side. Dave is off to the right. Looking extremely fast in the blue and orange. Oh, yeah. Got that racing stripe. Yeah. Hey, man. Racing stripes are fast. Of course. Stickers also make you go fast, too, though. I heard that once upon a time.
Looks like Dave's trying to get the crowd to go rowdy. Looks like Crystal Dunn and uh, Kate oh, Arnson are actually oh. racing for the reset champ again. Crystal has a few to make up. We're She's have uh, have a behind a couple. I know. I think we should have a reset, I, a reset off, if you I'm will. I'm down for that. Prize for the best resetter. Oh, yeah. Fastest. Just straight up fastest. May not be a pro shooter, but I'm a pro resetter. Hey, Let you me know just what? tell you. I will I, say I this, I could though. dominate in the reset if we, were in, if we were in a squad that was mostly run by pro resetters, we'd all be really happy shooters. Oh, of course. Even Adam Maxwell nods and says yes. See? Because you know what? Then we just get to shoot more. Or more often. He nods exactly. in agreement. Exactly. So Dave's getting set, heading to the uh, start box. Should have gave him knuckles before he went. Yeah. See. Oh, it's oh he just picked it up from Garrett. See, that could have been me right Gar there. Garrett, yeah, Garrett's oh. taking care of business. My heart's broken. But uh, you see Dave shooting a classic A2 oh. style. Oh, oh, running down the oh. line, getting hands. Dave's got Shakes some Dave Harvey yeah. building. Everyone. Mike throwing the hands up, giving the uh, questioning look. All right, their knucks up. All already getting ex excited, getting into the start stance. All right. <laughs> Dave's leaning <laughs> out on it. Last minute lean. And they're off. Dave's in the pistol. Mike's going shotgun. Mike's done with shotgun. And Dave's, Dave's done with pistol. That pistol. Dave's done Dave with shotgun. Smokes on that shotgun. Yeah. Mikey's got. Nope, they're even up. Yeah. Both on the rifle. Even now. Dave's two down on the plate rack. Well, they're even, oh, two man. plates each. Dave's got the left on only. Left and Dave oh, got Dave's it down. down. Wow, that was quick. Wow, that was a catch up. Yeah. Lots of uh, left right uh, movement for Mike there. Dave goes uh, jumping in the air. Dave working it right to left really smooth, but uh, had a few makeups allowing Mike to catch it back up. It's the Vortex glass, right? Of course. Vortex glass is doing it right. Well, it's a Huey. I mean, if you think about it, Dave's shooting a 1X on this, right? It's not like it's oh, super yeah. far away. But that Huey um, is sweet, that let me Huey's tell you. It's, it's a fast out. I ran one on my PCC the whole weekend, and I very much enjoyed it. I saw you set that up on the IG, man. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I always say that it's really hard to work an event um, and shoot it, but apparently Dave is uh, overcoming that pretty pretty well here. Yeah, he's doing both. Oh, we also got some. We got some friendly, friendly huggage at the yeah. end here. Yeah. So that puts us into, uh, we're moving down to the Sweet 16 here for the uh, TAC Ops side of things. You're in 2x4 uh, this I year. I am, yes. We're already going to, we're actually going to the final four here for 2x4. Shooting open with my tube gun. There you go, dude. <laughs> Having to plus up right at the that's end. My, uh, <laughs> that's my Blue Ridge mentality, oh buddy. Yeah. Um, I got Michael Cattell and Chad Swart out next. 2x4 is a kick in the pants, as someone might say. It is. <laughs> PCC in general is a really fun option. It really is. Um, I didn't want to like it at first. It's actually kind of like the Huey. I, I, was, I was used to other optics like that, and I didn't like it at first, and then I started shooting it. <laughs> you get that you know, that little kid giggle as you start shooting an array, and yeah. you, next thing you know, you just love it. I was a little unsure about the Huey at first, but yeah. well, first I time I shot it, it was like, wow, yeah, this I mean, is actually really nice. And that's nice. the thing with that optic is you see it, and you're not sure, and mm -hmm. then, I mean, just because there's been other things like that. And then you start shooting it, and like I said, I, I mean, I'm not a small person, and I start giggling <laughs> like a little kid, and it's kind of <laughs> funny. Um, but uh, so Michael and Chad, then we have Daniel Bestie and Tim Ho up next, and then we're going to go back to some 2x4 oh, yeah. with James two Leffler and Eric four. Sandstrom. Ow. You got five more, and you're up, bud. Oh, yeah. I say oh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, a little enthusiasm never hurt anybody, buddy. Not at all. Dave's still over there just cackling, having fun. You can hey, tell James. he's fired up. James, you got a shell upside down. Riley's picking on the uh, the JP guys here. I just like to have a good time. You do. All right. So we got Michael and Chad here. Chad's on the right. Michael on the left. Both looking very similar box setups. Both drawing the pistol. Yep, both drawing the pistol. Mike gets done ever so slightly faster on the pistol. What a and smoking now he's done shotgun, with the shotgun. Yeah. He picked that up fast. Yeah. 
And he's three oh, plates wow. ahead on the rifle. Four plates ahead oh, on the rifle. Man. One makeup on the plate rack. And he's done. That was crazy. That was smooth. Smoking hot. He only had one makeup on that last target on the that play was, rack. That was clean. He cleaned up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys shoot the, the hyperfire side stage yet? I haven't, no. No? Hi, Dakota, you shoot it? I have not. We have gotta get over it at some point. I haven't actually shot it uh, at all this weekend. Shoot it after this. I really should. I'll probably shoot it when we're all done here. But uh, I hear they're closing it when we're all done here. Well, I, I would assume that timing, <laughs> but uh, you know, maybe they'll let me sneak one in there let's and see, uh, think make a run. I think Crystal and Kate are gonna have their reset off again. Let's see, who's, who's gonna be faster? They Stand are. Stand by. Beep. Kate, don't lose. Oh. Kate's going all the way down here. Oh, Crystal fell short. She stopped. She's at helping the, out. She's yeah, getting she the other is, half. She is. She is. So what do you guys think of the bay? <laughs> this is from uh, Saws. Told me to pass a note. <laughs> so um, I'm going up to Saws next in the shoot-off here in a couple so shooters, and he just slipped Dakota a note to hand to me. And I read it, and it says, you are going down <laughs> with a frowny face. <laughs> For those that he don't know He is already Saz. sending me death threats <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm going to escalate it to. Awesome. Where is he? <laughs> Dave's, uh, him Dave's back sitting behind us again. Uh, still feeling the uh, feeling the big smile. Or well, rocking Saz the big smile. Saz is down there. Feeling good? Did you have fun, oh, buddy? Oh, man. What's up? Feeling good? Going to six here. Not, did, not quite 11. How did that run go, Dave? Oh, man. It was uh, it was fun, dude. The... Uh, I gotta Still tell you, breathing man. hard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing you don't think. I mean, there's not a lot of running, but you're definitely trying to focus, and your heart is beating through your throat. Well, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I hold my breath and make ready, and then I don't let go until I know who won. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> everyone? <laughs> <laughs> we saw you jumping for joy there at the end. You were yeah, really excited. Yeah, it was a good time, man. You know, the uh, the crowd here, they're, they're out hot. They've watched the uh, first round. They're kind of lulled into a sense of uh, – of uh, security, but this is actually getting to be a lot of fun here, and the uh, competitors are are welling on it, so it's a it's a good time. Everybody's pushing too. I mean, you know, you can definitely see when guys are getting to that point where uh, you're just you're just pushing so hard that you start missing, and then you got to make that mental correction. Yeah, I tell you what, man. The uh, so the the first round for me was against Eric Wilson of uh, Obsidian Arms. He's a, a Patreon supporter of the Three Gun Show. Second round was against Michael O'Brien. He's a Patreon supporter of the Three Gun Show. My third round's going to be against uh, Kevin Harrington, who's a Patreon supporter of the Three Gun Show. So <laughs> Dave's starting a theme. Yeah. Uh, I'd like everybody ooh, to Tim Ho didn't load the gun. Sorry, Dave. Hate to interrupt you, brother. But Tim did not load the pistol going in, drew it, and had to make ready, oh, had to make ready on the spot. Pulled uh, a Latola. Oh, the, oh mag. the mag fell out, mag. actually. Oh. So he's on the shotgun. He's back behind the shotgun, and... Daniel's already on the plate rack. He's up three, four, five, last six plate. plates. And it looks like Daniel got his it. last one. You know, Travis, I actually liked the way that Tim staged his rifle. Yeah. Handed to the side like that. I found that it's really it's all about how it, however you can just reach your hand in mm -hmm. naturally, right? Yeah. Um, some guys will do the vertical, and I'm yeah. I'm so tall, and especially on, uh, with dumps like this, that's not going to work for me at all. You have the slanted uh, dump? Yeah, I mean, I, the slanted dump is like at my just above my knee, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to grab it straight in. You're also a little bit taller than me. I am <laughs> slightly taller, <than> <laughs> slightly. <laughs> Six foot two versus well, how tall you know? Uh, I actually don't know. I I'd tell have you to look what, at my driver's yeah. license. I don't know. So five on this one right five, here, uh, Dakota Dakota knows. <laughs> five nine. <laughs> on this one right here, I've uh, I staged my rifle with the uh, the barrel in the slant bucket, and then the uh, and then uh, the magazine sitting on the edge of the uh the yeah. uh sorry the slant box and the reason i did that is because you're you're basically going to uh, a kneel on this on this stage oh, here that's pretty smart it yeah. makes the most sense you and then all you've got to do is pivot your rifle you don't even have to pick it up yeah you've just grabbed the grip and flip that little thing up and it's ready to rock in the position you just got to get down behind it yeah, i wanted I like to that. ask you this i haven't seen you in a while um you started rocking the classic a2 buttstock <laughs> yeah what's that all about dude <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm onto my backup rifle and I've been uh, shooting that all season. And when I built that rifle, uh, I knew that I needed an A2 uh, 
tube for the rifle length buffer, right? Buffer tube? Yeah. And uh, a friend gave me uh, a, a buffer tube, and it came with an A2 stock, and I thought, oh, I don't have to buy a stock now. So it's just economy is all it is. I, I love it, man. I'm, it's I, awesome. That's one of those I things. That I shot that in basic training, a yeah. 16, yeah. and uh, it's one of those things I've always wanted a 20-inch gun again with that, like that setup. And every time I go to do it, I always end up like um, – doing something different like a magpul prs yeah. like i have to like make it the next step but yeah well i found them in uh, most stocks that i'll uh, run them all the way extended anyway yeah and so this is already extended from the uh, factory so it, it just feels pretty good right on so this bat this belt is uh on the left we have eric sandstrom on the right we have james leffler from jp we're back in two by four huh? we are yes we yeah. are. this one's actually brought to you by weatherby rifles Excellent. I gotta tell you, James has a pretty sweet rifle. It's uh what is it, Star Wars Stormtrooper? Yeah, Stormtroopers. Yeah, Storm it's pretty nice. Yeah, all white Cerakote looks really good. Yeah. James is a giant Star Wars nerd and he's <laughs> proud of it. Well he also <laughs> has the Iron Man rifle that's super cool. Giant comic book nerd. <coughs> Go with shotgun. shotgun. Oh no. He's gotta throw in a load. James has to uh Oh, oh man, poor, and this is why we have this. match safe. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. James, oh, even James. with the bobble, is still three plates ahead on the plate rack. Oh. oh. Makes the last one fall last and is now. And he got a stop plate. And he got plate. a stop plate. He caught up. Got a boy, James. So James wins by three plates there, decisive victory, with a. Uh, looks like he's shooting like an M2 versus a. Uh, a drum port. mag. <laughs> yeah. So James had to be a little bit more deliberate with his uh, his shotgun shots there. Had to throw in that port load from his caddy. Yep. Is he just so not running a match six, saver? Six, or did 12, he, uh, he must have forget to load one. it. It uh, doesn't look like he had a match saver on there. He does not have a match saver. So he must have had two makeup shots, right? So there's he 12, yes, he did. 12 targets. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. We're back to uh, attack ops now. On the upper uh, right-hand corner of the bracket. Yep. Yeah, so for those of us following along here in the, in the uh, at the local event here. So we got uh, Nathan Payne. No nope. holding nope. guns. Oh. For oh. The dynamic <laughs> duo. With these guys. <laughs> so like, uh, is Tom or Jerry shooting right now? <laughs> <laughs> Nathan is holding the rifle uh, for Jake Latola. Blair yep. Steiny on the right. Jake on the left. And uh, who's this about brought to us by? This one is uh, brought to us, actually. This one is brought to us by Safari Land. Sweet. Yeah. Safari Land's, uh, you know, one of the standards and belts that we have in this mm -hmm. industry, right? I'm wearing mine right now. I uh, I personally shoot the shotgun caddies. Uh, I think they are phenomenal as far as retention goes. Um, they are the standard belt. What's cool is they actually put uh, $200 prize, or prize certificates on the table so somebody can actually get a good setup. Yeah, that's like a yeah. whole belt right there. Exactly. It's, a, it's a definitely a good start for it's somebody who's ELS. getting less. Oh, the great yeah. thing about ELS is like you can, you can take uh, it clip off. it on the back of everything. You can take it off when yep. you're uh, tired, and you can borrow from anybody because everybody wears that stuff. <coughs> Jake actually has a magazine inside his pistol this time as opposed to yesterday <laughs> when I saw him shooting. <laughs> <laughs> he left it off nicely, though. He did. <laughs> Jake on the first plate. Jake Don't one, one for one, one on the on pistol. The pistol. Smooth. One makeup on the shotgun there, and let's see how he does on the rifle. Flares still on his shotgun, has a little malfunction. He's now off the shotgun on the rifle. Jake, five plates down, six plates down. Jake and crushed it. Stop plate before Blair even gets uh, a shot off on the rifle. Man, that was a nice run. Yep, Blair did finish it out, though, which is always a smart thing to do because we did see once already that uh, one of the shooters left a. A plate up, not knowing in yeah. the in the dust. Left a pistol plate up, didn't even didn't catch it on didn't the way back it. through and lost the bout. Next up, we have uh, Mark Stevens and our very own Dakota's uh, dad, Todd Overland. Hey, Mark, which side are you going to be on? <laughs> Mark, uh, give me a simple answer of the right side. All right. Then. <laughs> Who's, uh, who's bringing us this bout, Travis? This one, uh, we're getting caught up to uh, a couple more of those sponsored bouts, but uh, we've got a few of those to do, and then we'll get there again. Cool. So I might say now that the uh, three-gun show live show brought to us by Grunt Style, who provided all the match shirts, and uh, 
these are actually pretty cool. So we had a, a new logo that incorporates Task Force Dagger and the classic Jeff Kirkwald turtle, turtle this year. Yep. They're pretty slick. American flag on the right sleeve and uh, classic grunt style on the left sleeve. On the back does say Jeff Kirkwald Memorial Match, uh, Memorial 3-Gun Match. And uh, gray for the competitors, red for the uh, staff. And uh, for those of you that are here right now, you can pick a one up if you need a spare. Ten bucks. Money goes to Task Force Dagger. I got to say, I do love the grunt style shirts. They're amazing. Comfy. Soft. Yep. yep. Supple. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be petting my back. David. It's <laughs> stroking. Sun here. Stroking Travis <laughs> I don't as know he says I'm that. doing that if you don't say it. <laughs> but it's far more entertaining <laughs> if we at least tell what's going on. <laughs> Glance back to Dave stroking Travis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should kind of set this. We uh, we put three chairs on the platform, and uh, I'm sitting on a cooler behind Yeah, Dave got Dakota. booted on his own show. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm riding, uh, like, uh, Shotgun rumble style, seat. I guess. Rumble seat? Is yeah. that what it is? We'll call it rumble seat. We'll go, we'll go, we'll rumble go seat real to Dakota old school. Right here. That's before my time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was before most of our times, bud. I rode in uh, a Chevy wagon backwards facing traffic. I did as a kid all the time. <laughs> yeah, no AC. Was it like it was a woody like, wagon from way like back sitting when? Sitting in a greenhouse. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> the window would roll down and nobody thought anything of it. Yep. They were getting exhaust in the face. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I treat my dog nicer than they treated us back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> We were replaceable. All right, Todd and – yeah, good point. <laughs> Knuckled Todd up Mark and ready, ready to go. go here. And they're off. Marks Both to the pistol, the pistol. Roughly the same time. I'll say a little ahead, but – Todd Todd's out of the pistol. pistol first by two plates onto the shotgun. Mark picks up his shotgun. And he's off Doesn't the shotgun. Doesn't miss a plate. Clean run on the shotgun for Todd. Todd down to the rifle. Slinging around. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, that, was that might close. be one of the closest Close falls we've had tonight. Todd was very metered on that one. Mark uh, was slinging some, but uh, how do you got feel about up. your How do you feel about your dad's run, to Daco uh, Dakota? That was close. <laughs> he wouldn't have had, like, five <laughs> rifle <laughs> makeups. He wouldn't have been as entertaining. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Calling out her dad. I don't think Dakota's too shy about calling people out. I'll be honest with you. She may not be the biggest person, but all right, y'all, I'm gonna head down and get ready for my run. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll see you soon, bud. Good, good luck. luck. Thank you. We're rooting for Saws, right? <laughs> oh, he Let him leave it first. He hasn't even <laughs> left the platform. You should have waited till I couldn't reach the mic. We've already turned your mic off, Riley. All right. So up next we have Dustin Felix uh, and looks like Billy Wideline, Weedlin. And I get promoted to a chair. Yeah, Dave. As we move Coming up the in the world, scaffolding. don't trust nobody. This is great, man. Wow, Riley's uh, butt is kind of warm. This chair is hot. <laughs> this is great. Hey, whose red dot is this? There's a red dot sitting on the uh, table here. It is uh, – one of uh, Dustin Sanchez. Ah. Well, Vortex hope, hopefully Razor. Hopefully yeah. he doesn't Three need MOA. It. On a riser. I think he's shooting on his PCC. It's actually the same optic I shoot on mine. You know how you can tell this is not a Frey Lick dot? It doesn't have a 45 offset. Straight up and down. <laughs> <laughs> is that the term now? I mean, have we coined that? Is that a, is it a Frey Lick dot on I a 45 offset? I coined it, and I'm going to keep repeating it until everyone falls in line. <laughs> That's how these things happen. The, the, the term Make 45 will again. literally be will be changed over to Freilich. Only on the PCC and the shotgun. Okay. Because uh, on the rifle, it is uh, that is well established long before Josh came along <laughs> in open division. So that that one's an offset dot. Yes. On a PCC or a shotgun, we call that a Freilich dot. Got it. Okay. I'm tracking. Mm-hmm. I've thought a lot about this. I had a 15-hour <laughs> drive here. <laughs> we should, uh, should say that uh, we are sitting on um, actual scaffolding. Yeah. Like you would uh, paint a house with, which is uh, pretty incredible. And this is uh, uh, provided by um, Haunted Hayride yeah. nearby. What's yep. I'm not sure what the name of it is. I can't find out. We'll get a here. we'll get an absolute an actual name on Brent's Haunted Hayride. The Dead End Hayride. The Dead End Hayride. Uh, Adam said, if you want the shit scared out of you, they'll do it. <laughs> Direct quote. <laughs> 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 and 
And uh, so thank you to them. They let us use their PA system as well. We've got a, a beautiful multicam cover. Poncho liner, man. Poncho liner that's uh, giving us a nice shade here. Not and, liner. Uh, it's poncho. That's uh, Garrett Grover from uh, Rise Armament put that up. And uh, this is the nicest poncho I've ever sat under. Thank you, Garrett. I only have the old one. <laughs> I don't have the cool new one. Oh, okay. Garrett's saying that he bought that one because he uh, didn't get Dustin issued any either. up here. And Billy Wideland? Roger that. I actually read your handwriting. I'm, we're getting there. We're getting Dustin there. off the pistol first. Two, two plate lead. Goes on to the shotgun. Down he with his whole shotgun array. The shotgun. One for one on that two for Dustin. Yep. Billy's the same way, though. One for one. He is three plates, four plates, five plates, six plates behind in the back, though. Yep. And the game is over. So Dustin uh, got all the rifle plates down before uh, Billy before Billy was able to uh, get one plate down. Billy gives up, does not finish his array. So Dustin's going to take this one. Um, I got to say, one thing that Dustin did that, uh, that uh, is uh, – Good strategy. He settled in on that first target and then just went ding, 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 straight across. Yep. I prefer to get the shot off as fast as I can, no matter where it's aimed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, hope and pray. The and, aim uh, and hope option. from there. Yeah, I take a lot of ciders and then uh, <laughs> settle yeah, I didn't know there. you were an F-class uh, F class shooter there, That's Dave. That's right. I like to get a wind call and then uh, <laughs> and then settle on the plate. Yeah, the, the bay is, you know, we do have a good breeze here, which is fantastic yeah. for a, uh, you know upper 80 day. Yeah, we should put that down so Dakota can actually see. Yeah. So we have a uh, okay. toolbox in front of Dakota sure. that he hasn't been able to see. Uh, yeah, we were except using at an angle. shade cover earlier, but the uh, sun has moved a little bit. So All next right. we have uh, Alex Strange and Ben Peterson. Then we have Riley and Chris Sa Chris Sausen, who uh, apparently has threatened Riley uh, with a well-drawn uh, handwritten note on a flap of a uh, <laughs> federal shotgun shell this, this box. Is this is amazing. <laughs> I think we should post a photo of that, yes, Dave, if, you, if should. you can do that. Um, I had my phone there, Dakota. I'll uh, this take is, a photo of it. This is outstanding. This is gamesmanship right here. This is great. Down so, in all capital letters, too. Yeah, yeah, you are going down The whole down note's in caps. caps. I mean, there's some... There's some we, uh, got, we got a frowny face. There's a lot that could be read into this. A little bit of aggression going That's on. That's right. Anyone who knows Saz knows he's... Uh, local law enforcement officer he actually worked both nights that he uh worked the match for us so he came out here and ro'd all day and then actually went to work all night yeah so. and so sazen is no stranger to handling uh troubled youth so he uh will give riley a run for his money <laughs> <laughs> but uh saz helps out with uh minnesota three gun group and the tri gun um up here as well at the same location always a, always a pleasure to shoot with but uh, we have Ben Peterson of Hyperfire and uh, Alex Strange of Federal. You know what I love about this is Good when uh, sponsors will uh, come up and shoot with us at matches. Oh, it's yeah. so cool. So uh, Hyperfire, uh, Ben Peterson, and uh, Federal Premium uh, Ammunition. Alex Strange. Alex Strange. Alex is hammering on the pistol plates. Uh, not really now getting him somewhere, but uh, he's a... Fetro's just so fun to shoot. We want to shoot more of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say this. Alex just hammered the shotgun section, though. He did. Got on the rifle first. Clearly the rifle, too. Yeah. <laughs> Whew, hammered plate, down. Wins by a six-plate lead. Unbelievable. Really picked it up and just put, the, put it into fourth gear as soon as he got out of the pistol and made it... Uh, Made it look really good at that point. We're actually moving back over to uh, back over to two by four now. Back to two by four. With, uh, this is our our Riley and uh, our Saz sh uh, shoot off. Um, actually sponsored by Surefire. They were kind enough to send us a number of lights for our uh, prize table here. Very cool. I actually used one of their sight or one of their lights uh, and laser combinations at, uh, at Safariland Expedition. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's for the night shoot on my PCC. Um, PCC was one of those things that I, I'll be honest, I was a late adopter to. Um, <laughs> but Me too. I, don't, I was still not doing it's, it. Uh, it's one of the funnest things you can do. Yeah, it's uh, so it, quiet too. Yeah, it is it is. It's a super manageable option. Um, I actually shoot PCC indoor in wintertime up in Wisconsin when we have to shoot indoor. Cause otherwise for rifle practice? For rifle practice for my USPSA options, yeah. So Todd Overland's carrying uh, Riley's uh, PCC or rifle or whatever that is. 
How yeah. do you get on this uh, this list, man? I need some help carrying like my the, stuff. Like the Todd. caddy list? Yeah. Carry Dakota Dakota how, do you, how do you get a caddy? Um, were you born into it? I mean, were you just that it lucky? Is. It's okay. You gotta father? be born into it. Man, can you put in a good word with me, with your dad? Well, my rifle's heavy. <laughs> so we got stock's, not, <laughs> stock's <laughs> solid. Stock's solid. <laughs> Chris Sazen from Canada and Riley Croft from Mexico, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> or are we talking to the? I'm lost. I'm just to be honest. I'm lost on that Texas. one, Dakota. I think Minnesota uh, and Texas. Oh, I got you. Okay. Uh, the Saws all the way over to help Riley. And whisper in his ear. <laughs> oh, whisper in his ear. That was oh, probably oh, words oh, of encouragement. I think it's another threat. Wow. I, I have a feeling it's words of encouragement. Saws in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Riley just shouted he needs a safe space. Somebody got a safety pin for Riley? Yep. Saws is doing the uh, the mental, the mental uh, voodoo. Minnesota, nice, right out yeah, the window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, when uh, when there's competition on the line, all that all that goes away, right? He's not he's not Canadian, so I won't apologize. But uh, oh, oh, there it is. A, a beautiful hug. Right I don't know it. if that was a choice by Sauce. Yeah, was that a uh, was that like a uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Was he trying to take him down? <laughs> Maybe he put a paster on his back. Yeah, Who could knows? Be. And they're off, Riley. Both out on the shotgun. Both took up the shotgun first. And they're shooting two by four, so they carry the shotgun through the array. Riley has a with a four plate lead on the shotgun down to the rifle first. Boom. Riley about five plates ahead, six plates ahead, and gets the stop plate with four plates remaining for Sazen. Sazen does is attempting to finish his array here. Ah, yeah, there he goes. Guess he didn't uh, stay true to his note. Yeah, no kidding. Riley with a good run. They weren't touching knuckles? <laughs> oh, they did the. Oh, man. Nathan Payne came up to tell us that uh, they were doing the gear shifter when they oh, uh, started. Oh, look at that hug. Riley with a hug. I hope there's photographs of this because <laughs> this doesn't need to be shown on. Sazen can't get away. <laughs> Nice work, Riley. We're actually headed back over to TACOP with Daniel May and Andre, uh, Andre, Andre DeSatel, followed by Garrett Grover and Josh Eppers. Ah. It's good times, man. The, uh, got the, the side stage going. We got the side stage going over there. You can hear the, uh, uh, the rounds, the hyperfire side stage. Uh, for those of you who are viewing and watching right now, five bucks for a run over at the Hyperfire side stage. Bring some 223 and some 9 millimeter, and uh, the uh, the two, I guess, carbines that we're using over there. One is a uh, 223 and one's a 9 millimeter. They're yeah. going to be given away, one to the winner and one random draw to everyone who shot the side stage. Yep, and every inch, every five dollars, and every time you try is yeah, another entry. Yeah, it's another entry, so which I mean is totally cool. So last year, uh, we had a gentleman Joe. spend. I think it was 200 bucks. Right, right around there, yeah. Right around 200 bucks, And uh, he shot it a bunch of times, won the side stage, picked his rifle, and he's shooting it today in this match. He's been shooting it. I mean, he, he shoots that rifle well. So awesome. That's that's one of the coolest things about something like this event, where it's yeah. just a little different, you know? Yeah, exactly. Andre walking up to the box with that haircut he did not get. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he's hunting, trying to hunt for his hat all day? Yeah. Andre apparently lost a hat, and uh, everyone borrowed it and and donned it for a few photographs last last night as we it were. Was on my dog for a minute. <laughs> Parker looked good. I have a feeling he did. All right. Moving to shotguns. Getting pretty close. Oh, man, they're coming back close. On the, Both uh, of the rifle, rifle at here. roughly the same time. Andre's uh, decisive lead on the rifle by like two plates. And oh, Andre pulls comes ahead. down to the that yeah. was Andre had a three-plate lead. Yeah, had a three-plate lead, gets down on the uh, stop plate, takes a couple extra shots, and uh, Daniel catches up. But it uh, wasn't enough. Andre takes that one. This match is so much fun. Absolutely. I want to shoot it again tomorrow. 
I uh, I got to do something very different in this match than I'm used to, um, running the prize table and doing that whole thing. Yeah, how was that? Um, it's very, it, it gives you a lot of respect for the the match, prom not promoters, but uh, the mm -hmm. match staff in general. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's so many different elements that uh, you don't think about until you've done it a few times. And, and when people make it look seamless, you know they've either done it a ton and struggled through it and tried to figure out those processes. Um, yeah. But there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, the more that I see that side of things, the more I appreciate it and definitely want to make sure that I thank folks for uh, for putting matches on and, and things like that because it is a lot of time. I know Adam was up here on uh, Wednesday morning uh, setting up all the all mm -hmm. the stages and, and getting things all measured for the uh, for the shoot-off. Um I came up Thursday and worked all day, Friday, Saturday. Um, and, you know, we only have 100 shooters. I can't imagine what the guys do for 300-shooter for 300 matches. Yeah, I know. So. <coughs> and uh, fantastic RO staff here, too. Many of them came for the build. Uh, Pete, Dustin, uh, several other Brent. people. Brian. Or Brent. Several yeah. other people as well. Yeah. Tons of work done here. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, – scaffolding was built by the time <laughs> this I got morning here. i'm looking at you buddy Thank yeah you, there was Brent. a bunch of dirt work done this morning like 6 30 <laughs> i got up at seven and i felt like i was way late for work yep so we who have we got up right now man we are garrett grover and josh eppers all right garrett grover on the left josh on the right back in the tack ops uh bracket here garrett grover making ready josh eppers making ready this is gonna be a good one Garrett drove up from Tulsa 12 hours. He did. He I still beat him on that one, though. On the drive? 15 hours. Jeez, Dave. I know. <laughs> Last hour was sketchy, I'm not going to lie. Oh, I uh, my first hour of my drive was a little sketchy. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. Garrett did bring uh, food for last night for our social hour. Yeah, it was awesome. Beer was brought to you, brought to us, I should say, by uh, Wisconsin Brewing. A um, little brewery local to me, uh, Verona, Wisconsin. All right. Big handshake and a uh, shoulder pound before we get going here. Garrett's a big man. I bet that hurt Josh a little bit. <laughs> Garrett's not a small guy by any means. No. Garrett out of the pistol very, or out of the holster very early. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and has a, about a five plate lead, six plate lead. Oh. Off the pistol first. Josh is still spending some time on there. Josh picks up his uh, shotgun as well. Garrett's off onto the rifle first. We're even on the rifle, and though. Now, Garrett, four, five plates down, six plates down. Going to the top plate. Had five about plates. A Garrett makes it. Yep, five plate lead on Josh there. Josh finishing it out, which is great. Garrett hails from uh, Rise Armament. So, uh, no stranger to some rifle work there. And uh, put, it, put it to the test. He just recently got a uh, another Razor 1 to 6. Running his rifle like a madman. Dakota, what's your uh, strategy on this? Did you do any sort of magnification on the uh, the rifle? Um, the first round I did, and the second round I took most of it off. Mm -hmm. By most of it, did you mean did you go back to like two or um, were you at three? I think I was probably at one point five. Okay, I was so at three the first time. Yeah. Okay. Three is almost too much for this distance. A lot of times, yeah, that just sub two is for just a little bit. I I feel pretty comfortable <coughs> with it. Yeah. yeah, I'm living that Huey life. But uh, and you know Mac Max will tell you anytime you get used to shooting a, a true one X, um, and then you give yourself a little bit of magnification and throttle can go back right yeah. back up. Um, but you also have the confidence to not do that. So. Yeah, I I ran a uh, a Huey, uh, you know Razor AMG UH1 in uh, pump division, in uh, patrol division at Colorado, uh, three-gun championship. So I had a ton of practice on that, and I didn't have time to change it back to the Razor before I got here, so ended up running that one in this match. It is a Bay match. I mean, it does make sense. I think it's a good fit. I think, uh, yeah, for the for the plates, I guess that one and a half I think would be kind of nice, but um, I don't think it's a severe disadvantage. No. So, so we got John Wydell and Kevin Yoder. Kevin wearing a bright, bright orange shirt. Yeah, Gunfighter gun Target fighter shirt. Target shirt. John Waddell's been putting in uh, a ton of practice. He's been killing it, man. Yeah, and holy cow, got to watch him shoot a couple stages yesterday. He's uh, he's moving fast, shooting fast. 
He's confident and smooth. He's I mean, been telling me that he's been doing nothing but shooting plate racks in the last uh, couple of weeks here. So we'll see how uh, how he does. That'll give me some direction to keep uh, keep working here. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we have Trevor Armbruster and uh, Joseph Rule already in the paddock over there. They're up next here. All right, John and Kevin are ready to go. They get the uh, the buzzer. Ooh. So Kevin's starting with his shotgun. John's going to pistol first. Both off. Fall apart. John's off the uh, shotgun down to his rifle. Kevin's still spending time on the pistol. John taking his time on the uh, on the rifle array. Finishes a full rifle array plus uh, four pistol targets ahead of Kevin. Uh, John went with my strategy of taking two ciders. One really high, one really <laughs> low, and then he <laughs> went straight in the middle for all the rest of them. Yeah, that uh, that that seems to be a, uh, a functional <laughs> option. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, when uh, when the buzzer goes off, man, and you're uh, oh. you know racing against someone oh. and you hear the uh, bump, bump, bump. I tell you what, when I shot against uh, um, Michael O'Brien just now, I he went to uh, shotgun first. I went to pistol first. And I was just going, you know, plink, plink, plink. I could hear him douche, 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 douche. And at the time, I couldn't figure out if it was if it was shotgun or pistol, right? But I thought, wow, he's going really fast. I'm really far behind right now. And that's just one of those things that, you know, you never can really – you can – we say, you know, tune everything yeah. out. Well, tune us out, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, – it's really hard. You hear somebody hammer, and you're like, God, that's a really good cadence, and then you totally take your eyes off what you were doing. And But, uh, yeah, it's it's tough to tune that, the other person out. Like, I had low folks deep, too. Like, they were touching in the middle. Oh, yeah. That uh, that high-low shot placement, yeah. a lot of that comes from, at least from when I'm doing it, it comes from getting low enough on the on the – the barrel and the gun kind of wobbling. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not out far. Pivot point. Yeah, and I mean using that pivot point and or trying to overcompensate mm -hmm. from the first one, then you un then you end up going low, and the next thing you know, you're you can know, maybe find it. We've got some guys making ready now. Yeah, we have Trevor Armbruster on the left and Joseph Rule on the right. And uh, when I went over to make ready, uh, pass Patham, and I'm gonna try it again. Karu Aratne. Ooh. Oh, I almost got it. That was almost close. I got a, a, a kind of so-so from him. We'll get there. One more time. I think I got it. One, one, I think we'll, I think if we do it uh, by syllable, I think we'll get there. Hmm? Oh, okay. The second chance bracket. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, breaking news. We've got a, a winner of the two by four bracket for the uh, the second chance bracket. And we'll tell you who that is right after these guys shoot. About even wow. on the pistol here, dropping down, picking up the shotgun. Joseph about two points ahead coming down the shotgun. It's pretty close on the rifle Ooh. now. It's going to come Don't down. Even. Oh. Trevor comes from behind off the shotgun and uh, does end up taking it by one plate. <coughs> so, winner from the uh, second round bracket, their second chance bracket, Mike Egendahl. Mike Egendahl. Congratulations, Mike. So he's going to be shooting off against the winner of the uh, first round bracket. And uh, we've got a special guest with us here, Garrett Grover. Garrett, how are you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. How are you guys? Oh, just super, man. It's, uh, it's great to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. So what do you think about the, uh, the shootout format, man? Man, so I think this is just great. I would like to see more matches like this. Isn't this just kicking the pants? It's, it's, it's so <laughs> much fun. It, I, so I came up and shot this match. Travis invited me up, um, and I'd heard of it, and, you know, I was kind of interested in it. And 
And he was just like, man, you should really come up. And then Rise decided to sponsor the match. So then I was like, you know what, I'm coming up. Sweet. And, and uh, one thing that really struck me about this match was the camaraderie of the of the shooters in this area. Not yeah. only the quality of the shooters, because there's some really good shooters around here, but just the camaraderie. And, and it's almost as much, or even probably even more as much, about coming out and hanging out with your friends yeah. than it is about actually shooting and winning prizes and all that stuff. I got to say, man, I was really excited to come back to uh, Minnesota. This is one of my favorite places to shoot just because of the uh, the shooting culture here. Mm -hmm. Just incredible the uh the amount of uh familial support around yep. you know if you notice there's a lot of shooters but they also have their wives girlfriends mothers fathers yeah. with them and and stuff like that so it's uh it's pretty cool to uh to be able to see that well i'm definitely it's 12 hours away but i think i'm going to become a regular up here awesome. you know, at least a couple times a year awesome try to get oh, as I like many it. matches as i can up here it's it's really cool so we up up in front of us now we got amax adam maxwell against Elliot Watkins in this one is on the left. Awesome. Uh, another two by four bout here. Adam, Adam picking up straight the, shotgun. The borrowed listening shotgun. What <laughs> these guys going to shotgun? Cleaned up with that dissident shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Adam shooting an 11 inch gun, but he's cleaning the flat right, plate rack. That was one for one in the plate rack right there. Yeah, Adam wow. does uh, does take this one here. That's how you shoot the plate rack right there. Carl's trying to touch my leg down here. So I'm noticing on this on this plate rack, there's a lot of guys that will get up there and just hammer away. Yeah. And have a bunch of misses. And then yes. you get the guys that slow down, wait for their sights to settle before they press that trigger. And those are the guys that seem to be having more success on the plate rack. We were talking about that, and I think the one that was uh, um, brought it to uh, to the conversation was Dustin Felix. Like he took a lot of time to get to that first plate, but then he only had one makeup shot all the way across. He just got his. Uh, you know, his elevation settled in, and then, then just ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Whereas, uh, uh, like I was telling Travis in Dakota, I like to take a couple ciders <laughs> <you know? laughs> and uh, just uh, uh, throw some rounds down there, make my uh, opponent think that uh, that I'm, I'm really well in a way. Not yeah, on purpose, yeah. but I'm just missing, that's all. Yeah, playing the mind game. Exactly. I think uh, what a lot of people uh, underestimate is the importance of building a good, stable firing yes. position. So taking that extra second to get stable and, and, and get settled in before you start pressing your shots off. I can definitely say it's one of my personal uh, one of my personal issues. <laughs> I think it's tricky because, you know, we're looking at 70 yards, right? So it looks like, oh, this is a chip shot yeah. with a carbine, right? Yeah, right. So you don't respect it near as much as you would if it was like a 400-yard shot. So mm -hmm. you're not building that stable position. But when you're talking about going up against another shooter – and only uh, yep. only seven targets between you and victory. Yeah, it yeah. makes uh, makes sense to take that extra second second and a half. Well, it's to build that extra position. It's worked well for me. Both my bouts that I've shot so far, we got on rifle roughly at about the same time. And I was able to settle in and and uh, I think I've had three rifle misses in between my two bouts. So that's pretty nice. Good. Nice. Happy with that. But oh, are we done with the uh, round two? Yeah, we're into actually our uh, we're into our round going into uh, eights here. Nice. So we'll get down to our top eight TAC ops and our so top – or actually our, we're in our four, uh, final four for uh, two by four already. Speaking of TAC ops, winner of the second chance uh, shoot off, Kim Peterson. Yes. Kim Very Peterson cool. has been racing people to reset yes, during the first all round long. all yep. day, feeling feisty, and then it uh, looks like he put it on the shooting as well. Yeah, we uh, also known as uh, Fake Jay Carrillo. <laughs> 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 so Kim was actually who I shot off against in the – in the round one. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he knocked he, him out. He's coming back for revenge. I bro. know. <laughs> Apparently not having it. <laughs> but uh, so I met Kim. I met him a long time ago, but didn't really get to know him. Last night we kind of started talking. Man, he's just a good dude. He's like hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So Fun that's guy. something you can talk about, Garrett, coming from somewhere that, uh, you know, we have a little different, like, culture as far as that goes up here. Mm -hmm. So we had a social last night for everyone who wasn't here. Um, Rise provided and Garrett provided some uh, – some sustenance and like I said there was beverages provided um but you know how is that is that something that happens everywhere that you've seen it's something people you know it's, be mimic. it's becoming more common that kind of wel welcoming atmosphere I think in three gun and trying to make matches more less of a, of a competition more of an experience mm -hmm. um but I got to say you guys or you know this match really yeah knocks it out of the park as far as that goes yeah um, you know what you know what I like about this range specifically Forest Lake is that uh you know it's it is a social gathering afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, last year, I got the opportunity to stay several nights here when I, I visited uh, uh, Arms and Arms, JP. And so um, my trailer was on the uh, uh, range. Got to shoot a, an Ignite match during the week. And 
what I noticed was that that social culture is also with the clay sports, where people are hanging out, sitting on tailgates, BS and after matches and stuff like that. Oh, cool. A lot of times with an adult beverage. Yeah. And uh, that's like something completely different than we do in uh, in Colorado. So we're uh, looks like we're getting ready to start out, and we're going to do all the tack ops first. Is that yep. what I just looks like we're going to burn through to, uh, and then we're going to go do the uh, the final two. It so looks like. So what's our shooting order for uh, folks that are here? Yeah, in, for uh, for here attention. in the for here in the uh, in the bay, we have Nathan Payne and John Weebush, then Corey Thatcher and Sam Munson, Kevin Harrington and Dave Hartman. Oh. You're three down, Dave. Yeah, I better go get ready. Michael Cattell and Daniel Besty. Dakota, you got Jake Latola, you, you Todd keep Overland. An eye on these guys. Dustin Felix, Alex Strange, Andrew DeSotel, Garrett. Second to last is bracket, buddy. Yeah, all right. John Waddell and Trevor Armbruster. So I can hang out for a little bit anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're getting so the uh, hey dead air guys, so dead air. So. <laughs> Dakota's trying to talk to the side of my head uh, with some planning here, but uh, we'll get uh, we'll get back to the game. So I just so, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, buddy. What's up? No, I just uh, got back from uh, Washington D.C. Uh, Very cool. About six hours before I drove up here, <laughs> um, got to go to the NRA Gun Museum. That had to be cool. And see the NRA headquarters, and that's that museum is really really cool. If you Where is that? In it's DC. in uh, Fairfax, Virginia. Okay, okay, they're getting ready to go. Oop. So looks like Nate and uh, John are are uh, knuckles together in the start box here. Nathan going left, John going right. Both have a very similar uh, rifle presentation in the box. Both go pistol. Nathan out of the holster very quickly. Nathan's off pistol. Nathan hammers. clean six for shotgun. six in the shotgun. Just hammers it like straight to the rifle, each one. Nathan's a plate ahead, two plates ahead, three plates ahead, and that is the game. Yeah, by two plates. So I guess John Weebush, I just I squatted with him yesterday, and he's a good guy. I really like him. Um, apparently he's uh, one of the top PRS shooters in the state of Minnesota, which is pretty cool. <laughs> That's a whole other game, man. Yeah, a right? whole different one, game. It's one I've never started. Actually, the nice thing about this bout uh, was brought to us by ANS Engineering, the trigger guard guys. Uh huh. Yeah. Have you shot one of those yet? I've messed with Dylan's a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just going to say he's a cheater. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it, it is a piece that I will tell I, I don't know that it necessarily makes you faster, but it definitely m makes you more consistent. It definitely doesn't make you slower. Yeah. Um, I loaded with his gun, and I also got – Land's got one on his gun, Land yep. Win. And uh, I really like it. It's a really neat piece of gear. Yep. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's removing those variables, which is what I like about it. Nathan shoots one. Nathan actually shoots for an S. Um, but uh, you know it's one of those pieces that we're always continually working the game as far as gear. Right. Minor details bring us up ever so slightly more. Um, and that's just one of those pieces that I uh, that I, I personally am putting on guns. Yeah. I I, I I'm looking to possibly add one to my uh there are some on the prize table my markroth shotgun there you go yeah i uh, i'm actually shooting a markroth gun this year uh, moving forward as well um i got some bredas that i'm moving into oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. that went to mark i'm actually really excited i get to put the new receiver on mine oh uh, cool so yeah but uh well i don't know that i could be any happier with mine i'm, I'm pretty pleased with it that ans engineering uh trigger guard might be a good addition to it though and definitely won't hurt yeah those guys are also local to us here. Oh, are they? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, the Midwest has a lot of companies that do a lot for the, the for this game as well as shooting in general. Mm -hmm. you know, we just talked about PRS. I mean, there's some of the best barrel manufacturers in the world in Wisconsin. Um, we have Federal here in, in Minnesota. Um, you know, we have a lot of really important um, companies that, that are in this area. Um, and every and what's cool is you know there's there's meccas everywhere across mm -hmm. the country. And everybody does stuff a little differently. Um, but we're all working under that same umbrella to keep it, you know, to keep it going. Yeah, so. right. And it seems like the northern Midwest, like I know around Rapid City, South Dakota, there's a lot of manufacturers. Rapid City uh, and Sturgis, yeah. I've got a bunch of buddies out yep. in those companies. Yep. Um, yeah. And and not to mention a really, just a really cool location. Um, if no one, if people have not been to uh, to uh, Sioux Falls, uh, Rapid City, and specifically Sturgis area, 
Custer National Park is phenomenal. Yeah, if you get into uh, – so I grew up in Deadwood, which is just a few oh, miles right from there. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, we, we actually played against Sturgis. Nice. In, in sports and On stuff the way to Wyoming, school. we're going to go out there. We've got oh, cool. uh, we've got Corey Thatcher and Sam Monson. Sam going left. Sam with a fast sprint going straight shotgun. <laughs> having a couple makeups right away, but having to stop and reload here. Three plates to, still up. Um, oh. Corey is done with the, the pistol, works shotgun, shoots it clean. Yeah. Oh, he's out of ammo. Yeah, Sam just uh, hung it up. Yeah, oh, that's unfortunate. That I, is unfortunate. I got the squad with Sam yesterday, too, another good guy. Good shooter, too. Yeah, it's, uh, nobody ever wants to win that way. Nobody ever wants to lose that way. Yeah. What is part of it? I mean, if... It's part of the shoot off. You've got nine rounds, ten if you got a match saver, and yep. if that's all you take, and, you, and you, you don't shoot it clean. You know, that's one of those things that even on a stage, it, it's a question. Of, you know, it's a question of when we're shooting the game too. Yeah. You know, you're at a regular stage. How much ammo do you carry? Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got, if you've got, say, you got 13 plates, you've got a regular tac ops gun, you've got nine in the gun. You know, you turn it to load four. Well, how many more do you carry? Yeah, I usually. You try to carry Yep, I do the same thing. I try to carry. So sorry, say again, Dakota. I try to um, <laughs> carry double what I need to load. So if mm. I need to load four, I carry eight. Okay, that gives you a little bit, and then if you happen to bobble some or something like that, makes sense. I usually try to carry. If I need four, I usually carry about thirty-six, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to make sure. Full chest rig. <laughs> yep. Anyways, I think I gotta go. I gotta go get ready for my next uh, match. So I'm gonna yep, you're uh, uh, you're one, two, three, four, five down. So yeah, yeah, I better go. Absolutely, thanks, thanks buddy. Right, guys, thanks for thanks coming. Thanks for in. having me. All right, Dakota. So, just you and I now for a little bit. Oh yeah. Looking at Brent here, who's ready to get some people started. Ooh, good old half Dartman going right. Kevin Harrington on the left. Wondering if his mustache is going to give him any luck against Dave here. Probably. Good fix. Good fix, Kev. Who knows? <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric from Obsidian filming uh, Kevin. So it looks like... Uh, Davey's got a shotgun stage just to the left. Uh, trigger guard going right in the right-hand bucket on the right-hand side. So what do you think about a uh, match like this with shoot-off being the most, imp the most important thing? Does it really diminish the stages in the first day, or does a lot of people just have fun? Um, I mean, part of me is very traditional and just likes to shoot but the thing that I really enjoy about this match is it gives me time to experiment because shooting the first day is not the most important part then I can try new things and kind of like a club do match. it under pressure yeah, too absolutely looks like they both go pistol first here Dave's four down, Kevin's three down, now four down. Dave's rocking a plate ahead advantage. He's onto the shotgun. Kevin's onto the shotgun as well. Dave's done with the shotgun. They're both on the rifle. On the rifle. Dave's two plates ahead, three plates ahead. His first shot hit the plate. He didn't throw any. <laughs> His first shot hit the plate. And, and Dave's done. And Dave takes it. Dave throwing up a big woo there. Looks like Riley's joining us again. What's up, Travis? What's up, Travis? Oh, hey, buddy. How are you? you? Want to make sure I get your volume right here yeah. and have you on here. Looks like Dave had a strong run there. Dave, yeah. Dave hit the first plate. The big woo. At Way the to end. be Daver. I think he's excited to be shooting semi-auto again. What do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that one was brought to uh, brought to us by uh, Duke Defense. You ever run their offset sites? No, I actually run a JP offset site. Yeah, that's a throwback. Yeah, that's a super throwback. Oh, yeah. That's super cool. But for the most of us who don't have cool stuff like that, 
Hey. Duke defense seems to be the way to go. It's from before my time. Hey, man. There's a lot of stuff that's from before my you time. You know what? You you have an understanding that there's some uh, there's some good stuff that was made uh, before you. Disposable <laughs> cameras. Dispo being yes, one of them? yes. <laughs> What are the wind-up uh, phone thing? What are those things? Rotary phones? Rotary. There we go. Rotary phones. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. <laughs> <laughs> Driving with it now, right? These days. Of course. But uh, so up next we got Michael Cattell and Daniel Bestie. Michael. Uh, Dave's walking off with a smile over there. Dave's ripping. Oh yeah. Throws a shotgun up in victory pose. Michael's been ripping, dude. He's been putting the plate rack down clean every time. Um, he's actually rocking a set of uh, offset irons. Um, as a righty, which unfortunately for me doesn't work. Um, so if you are a lefty and one of the few of us out there that doesn't have offset irons because no one has made a good set for you, the Duke defense is where it's at. Very Lots true. of varieties. I've uh, shot some of theirs. I actually like them a lot. I do too. Actually, there's a bunch of sets on the prize table as well. Are there? Yeah. Yeah. They were really... Big thank uh, you to them. Yeah. I, I've actually had the opportunity to uh, to speak with Barry at a couple different events, and he's always a uh, absolute class act and nice. heck of a nice man, so... Well, we'll see how they work so for him. Oh, well, he's yeah. going to shoot Daniel Bestie. <laughs> Take it back. Daniel Bestie and uh, Michael Cattell. Michael going left, Daniel going right. And they're off. Both, Both going pistol. The the pistol. They're about even. Daniel Ooh. burns down the shotgun. Mike's first on the shotgun. I'm sorry, Mike, Mike's first on the rifle. He's a plate ahead, two plates ahead. They're even, one to one left. Ooh, you get it almost evenly. Whoa, oh! Oh, it goes. Wow. And Michael. Daniel with the win. I believe. Was I need it a Daniel ruling. Or Michael? That's super close. I will need a ruling on that one, you guys. I think it. I we totally I think forgot I saw to use Michael, our vortex glass back here. You, you know, we were so excited and thralled and watching the whole thing. Yeah. I think we're going to clear some guns and somebody's going to give me a report from down below. I, th I think I saw Michael's good amp first, but I guess we'll, we'll see. He's pointing towards Daniel. Oh, okay. yeah. Thanks, Brent. Looking forward to it. This is going to be cool. Who's going to win, though? Lee or Path or Reed or Patham to get down there for me? Give me a, re give me a reading. Okay. All right. Shooter ready. Stand by. Run it out. You guys got oh, it. Oh, Patham's got the lead. Patham's got the oh. lead. Wow. Patham with a straight line. Oh. Reed's working it. Dane even runs out there with him. Dane getting caught up. Oh. Who was it? Patham Who ran to the right. It? Oh. oh, Daniel with the win. With the win. That one was uh, unbelievably tight. That was unbelievable. As close as you can get. We had to run down there and see it. I couldn't. Uh, when they went to one plate left on the rack, each inside plate, and then the the knock or the the stop plates, I was pretty excited. Yeah, and, uh, they hit them down at the same time. And then they started. Yeah, exactly. The Dakota. They worked it right to the end. Um, and those pl those stop plates fell. It literally, I mean, they could almost stop themselves from falling. They were so close. Carl with gunfighter targets made some incredible targets out there. Carl is the man of steel. Where is Carl? Right behind us, walking around. To Dave's your putting right. shotgun shells in our uh, in our cooler. Only shoot, open, Only shoot open, he says. Are you sure it's not hashtag slide ride or die? Carl's off to my left now. Oh, there you are, Carl. Thank you. Targets look awesome, buddy. Tar Carl gives me a good nod. Big thumbs up. We, uh, looks like we're still looking at the targets. Oh. There might be a little controversy well, Looks like there, there is a controversy here. I may have to correct my, uh, my last report. Um, I've crossed this out now twice. <laughs> Waiting for the final word. We get a final Brent. ruling down there? Brent will uh, come back and give it to us here. <laughs> Up next, we have Jake Latola and Todd Overland. I think they should get him out there like the fighters and raise the hand. Which one it was. <laughs> Definitely should. Definitely should have a championship. Yeah, throw the right hand. Throw the right hand up. Out. Uh, speaking of which, I heard somebody uh, somebody say uh, at some point that uh, they want to see Josh Freilich and Nate Payne arm wrestle. Oh, yes. and, uh, oh I, yeah. I heard that. I have heard that. I heard there needs to be some sort of uh, charity amount raised, though, for the guys willing to do it. Nate, maybe you can turn around and tell me if that's put real or not. He shakes his head oh. now. Are you sure? Okay. We can do it. So if they're – Nathan's in. Where's Josh? 
Josh, where you at? But do the donations go to Task Force? Of course Tiger? they do. Of course. Of course yes. they do. Who else? What's my final call? call? Patham. Who won? Who's my final winner? They don't know. So the, the my y your left, my right hand shooter was the plate underneath. It is Daniel Bestie. All right. Looks like we got Todd up and Jake Latola up next. Yep, Jake on the left, Todd on the right. Todd is holding his own uh, firearms because both of you Dakota are here. Dakota smiling over here. Apparently there is no uh, there is no return for the ca the man who caddies both of your guns. So Dakota, are you putting your money on your dad or Jake? Uh, Going no blood comment. or water? No wow, comment. no comments. I, I think that's a fair statement. Um, I don't think that would put you, would put you in that position. <laughs> Just want to see what she'd say. Oh, yeah. Who's your money on? JP all the way, right, for you guys? Yes, JP. They're both shooting JP rifles. That's okay. the point. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dakota put specify putting Riley in place. You didn't, you didn't in say what guns they were using. They're both saying. shooting Vortex too, so <laughs> All right, looks like we're getting close here. Are they both shooting federal ammo? I believe so. Looks like they got the trio there then. Could honestly go either way with that. Looks like Jake's heading back to the uh, start box here. Looks focused and in the zone. Breathing hard, deep breaths. Jake. So majestic. What is it, uh, Jake Latoya? <laughs> yeah. So you guys have to tell me that story when these oh guys yeah. are done here. Yeah. So it looks like your Todd. Uh, say your dad, because you're sitting next to me. My apologies. Uh, but up. Todd is off. Hands up to the right. He's got the knee pad on. Jake's so going left, doing the same. And they're off. They both both go pistol right away. Jake's four plates, five plates, six Jake's plates in. Pistol. Todd is four plates, five plates. Jake is on the shotgun. Six and plates he clears in. Clears the shotgun as Todd goes to the shotgun. Jake's on the rifle. He's got two plates on the rack. Three, Three plates, four, four plates, five, five six, six, and done. Jake cleared it. Jake by five plates. Looks like that JP rifle really worked well for him there. You know what I like about the uh, the team that is Jake Latola <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Nathan Payne. Is that they help each other out, you know? Like Jake doesn't have to carry his own rifles, and and then uh, at lunchtime I saw how they eat lunch. It was really weird. It was like a, a mama feeding a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> Jake would chew up the food and then spit it in Nate's mouth, and it, would they take turns doing it? They did or actually. Was it always yeah. Jake? Yeah. No, they took turns, and that's a great thing. Is it, it's team, right? It's teamwork, team effort. So Jake switched over to an M2 recently, or for the year. What did he used to uh, shoot? Was a it a Vinci? Years, he used to shoot a Vinci, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jake being a, the sportsman that he is and going over and saying congratulations to Todd. But, yeah, that's uh, that was a change, uh, you know, because that's one of those things that when you're when you're incredibly focused, you know, making changes is always tough. There's yeah. always some sort of voodoo you have to avoid, right? Well, especially when you're an engineer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Change is not good. People Ch do like trains. What can I say? Change requires uh, uh, meetings and arguments and focus groups. So next up, we have Dustin Felix and Alex Strange. Looks like Alex is taking the left lane. It's the one he's preferred the last few bouts. He's been absolutely crushing it so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. he had a little, he had a little pistol wobble at one point, but uh, he definitely. If, if, he wobbled, right yeah, if he wobbled at one point, it was, you know, 90 miles an hour on, on the other ones. We're the bracket, brother. We are right here, buddy. Oh, cool. Dustin Felix, Alex Strange. Yep. And then uh, Andre, have up next? Andre DeSotel yep. and Garrett Grover. Cool. And then John Waddell. And Trevor, Trevor Armbruster. Armbruster. Okay. That'll be a good shoot-off. Well, so, I mean, we're at that point where everybody's <coughs> shooting shooting well. Uh, this shooting bout's about the same, too. Yeah. This bout, bout's actually brought to us by uh, Superlative Arms, the uh, bleed-off gas block people um really good folks over there um, one of the few gas blocks that doesn't that actually doesn't just cut off gas it actually bleeds it off so you're actually venting it forward um you oh never really e never even comes into your gun yeah so it's a pretty cool option wow good people good to work with and that's really what that's what this industry is is based on you know in my exactly. mind exactly this match is all about too exactly yeah, people right. coming together for the betterment they're both stepping up to the line shaking hands they get ready. Dustin pushes most of Alex out of the box just because <laughs> he's a significantly larger human being. 
Here they go. Both drunk. Both pistols. Alex, super Alex. clean on the pistol. Yeah. Yep. Dust one, one make up on the shotgun, shotgun one, but behind. didn't even stun him. Alex, three plates ahead, four plates ahead. Got the plate right cleared, and, and he Alex wins. takes it. By, by three plates and a stop plate. Man, he's, uh, as we uh, we narrow it down, these bouts are getting really close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting I mean, to be a lot one of error, fun. Yeah. One yeah. error is, is definitely starting to uh, change the uh, the, the definitely. environment. I got, I got lucky on the last bout. Kevin and I had uh, both had, we had a faulty first pistol plate. We were both all hitting it and it wouldn't fall over, which is not true at all. We were both missing it. But <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, luckily we were equally crappy. So. But uh, we did notice, and Dakota brought it up, that you didn't take your ciders. On the plate rack, the rifle plate <laughs> oh, rack. Yeah. You I, were, I you took were what Garrett said to heart there. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is how I was winning. I'm like, oh, okay, that seems like a good idea. Thanks, Dakota. So always got my back. <laughs> Garrett's going right here. Uh, Andre's going left. John Waddell helping out, uh, taking care of Garrett. And Kate Arnson helping Andre out. Got to get a helper. How do you get a helper? I think you just ask, buddy. Oh. Yeah, you probably. <laughs> you know, I, I had the uh, the opportunity to choose. Um, generally, like the uh, smart money is to choose the left side in a shoot off. Why is that? If you're a right-handed shooter, because okay. then you can ride the uh, ride the recoil across the uh, arrays. Yep. However, since I had two reps already on the right side, I chose to just stick with that. Dave, I'm pretty sure that me and Dakota both helped you at the Colorado Three Gun Championship. Absolutely, so I don't want to hear it. Absolutely, we did. were we both helped be your caddy. You totally so did. Stage plans. So he's, he's fibbing to y'all. He is not so telling pop. the truth. Well, back to what Dave was Did saying, say though, Riley. Pop? What w do you have a side preference, and for any reason? Um, I like the right side just because I started there. And okay, and you're in the same boat as Dave then. Yeah. Well, I switch with what works. Yeah, I didn't get a choice in the first two. And uh, I figured might as well just stick with that if that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's like once you get a rhythm on one side, no matter which one you start on, mm -hmm. you don't get your choice. Mm -hmm. You kind of just stick with it. Because once again, changing things. Yeah, exactly. So which side did you go on, Dakota? I went on the left, riding the recoil. There you go. Garrett's all set up. He's got the shotgun in the, in the right uh right dump far off to the left and his rifle's actually standing up on the far left side of the left dump. Yeah. Andres is uh, all in the same the, the right hand dump of the left side with the uh, mag on the right hand side of the dump. Both go pistol right off the bat. Pretty even. Andre pulled ahead by one plate there. Garrett's off the pistol. Both off the shotgun. Very even right now. Oh. Andre first into position. Now he's two plates up. Three Six plates, plates up. Wow. And Ooh. He that came back. Wow. Andre, uh, got, uh, Garrick definitely came back, but Andre was into his position faster, yep. and it was definitely looked more consistent. It was pretty close there for a second. When Andre they both takes on the plate that right. by a stop plate and half a plate, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Who do we have up next? That, that one was, uh, next up we have John Waddell and Trevor Armbruster. That, that bout was brought to us by Code Evolution. Hmm. Um, have you seen their handguards, Dave? I have not seen them up close. I've seen them on the internet. They're, uh, they're another carbon one of those fiber. companies that, carbon fiber, uh, another one of those companies that, uh, you know, are, are by guys who uh, have been around for, for a long time and um, just once again, you know, really good people to work with. Very cool. So. Patham is uh, putting those jeans to work today. It is definitely <laughs> warm out, is. and he is rocking a full set of jeans, and uh, I think I would die. Who wears See, jeans to a three-gun match? Patham. <laughs> if only he had the bald eagle shirt, too. <laughs> oh, man. i got to go get a selfie with that. I'm not even joking. I think we can the have a bald eagle shirt? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's pretty sweet, dude. I think Great we should. shirt. All right, John on the left now. Trevor on the right. 
both have the shotguns dumped in the outside bin. It is interesting how everyone has like a certain uh, method for staging their gun, and it's th we're seeing so many different variations. Yeah, there's a significant. Some are vertical. For example, John's is vertical on the inside of the outside, and Trevor's in the same position, except it's flat and the trigger guard away from him to the right mm -hmm. on the on the right hand side. That's how I, I think that's how I put my shotgun in there. Felt natural. I really can't remember. I intended to dump my pistol with my left hand and pick my shotgun up with my right at the same time. I'm not quite sure if I executed on that or not. I'm not really super coordinated, so I don't <laughs> know if I should have tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I always tried him. I, I know, uh, know Tarrant uh, preaches that uh, and then trains that type of uh, thought process a lot. Um, what type of process is that? The dumping one gun with one hand and grabbing oh, yeah, the other one. Yeah. Um, See, in my, my, in my stage walkthrough, it always goes perfectly, but somehow, as soon as the buzzer goes off, yeah, same I here. never seem to do it. Start, like, checking my pistol from four yards away. So, John, right? and, yeah, John and Trevor's brought to us by Alex Pro Firearms. Uh, my very own Jason Lee, who's helping with the prize table, uh, donated some good stuff. But uh, John's done with the pistol. Trevor's done with the pistol. Like John, had two John with two shots. extra makeup shots there, but still faster on the Just shotgun down to the right foot first. Taking that extra time. Even on even up. Oh, 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 the cover oh, just oh, beforehand. Comes Dang. down to the stop plates. Yes, it did. Did anybody else see? Uh, Both came off with smiles. Trevor Armbruster on the right there. Very cool. Just Trevor killing really it. Takes that one. Uh, John was super tenacious on the uh, rifle pull out of there and just right into position. Yep. Didn't waste yeah. time to like to stand up and kneel. He just did it all in one motion. It looked really good. That's the way you do it, man. Like the uh, setting up that rifle is very important, especially when you're going down to a, a, a reverse kneel or a double kneeling position. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the enthusiasm out of Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Patham still running it out, helping us uh, all the way down on the long plates here. Even in Come the dreams. Okay. All right, everybody. We got a quick announcement for those of you standing on the uh, the railing. Before we start final, f or when we start final four, we are going to be shutting down the hyper fire side stage. So if you want to get over and shoot the hyper fire side stage and get your name in for the uh, the rifles. Go do it now. It's five bucks. Bring some two, two, three. Bring some nine mil. Whack away on some uh, hyper fire triggers and have yourself a good time. So now we're starting the two by four, and it looks like we're doing tech ops still. Tech we ops. are. All right. Who do we have left in tech we're ops? Finish all up right. Tech all ops? Right. Who do we have left? Quarters. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're so going to finish all the tech ops. Yeah, right. Looks like okay. we're going to Final Four everywhere. So who do we have up now? We should have Nathan Payne and Corey Thatcher. Oh, that's going to be a good one. I'm up in two, so you guys uh, have a good time without me. Yep, Dave, get ready. Rock I'll, and roll, buddy. I'll miss you. Good luck, Dave. Good luck. I love better you. get a good woo out of you. <laughs> or a harumph, either way. Yeah. Hit that plate on the first shot. Don't spray and pray. Words of wisdom from Dakota. <laughs> Looks like Nathan's already over there getting ready. Gonna take a little break. Looks like paint repaint some steel. Oh yeah, final four. Final four paint job. Spouts brought to us by uh, EAA, the uh, folks that import uh, Tanfolio pistols. They were actually f kind enough to put a Gold Cup team gun uh, on the table as well. Wow. Looks like Ben Peterson from uh, Hyperfire is joining us. What's up, Ben? Let him get his headset on here, Riles, and we'll get him going. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going? Hey, everybody, how you doing today? There we go. <laughs> Couldn't hear you the first time, buddy. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Been running around like crazy during this match. How's that side stage going? Uh, it's going really well. It's going really well. Uh, the nice thing about it, we made it a little bit larger than we did last year. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have the random draw in there as well, so it gives everybody that shoots a little bit more. Fantastic. It's awesome. How are you guys doing on that? As far as uh, are we getting, are we getting uh, a good? Uh, I know. I mean, I hate to make anything about money, but uh, are we getting yeah. a good donation and yeah, folks are having yeah. fun? Yeah. I think they're up. Uh, we're up right around 100 participants so far, and then there's awesome. some people who've paid for multiple other rounds as well. So cool. You give uh, away any of those shirts that we have over there? Yeah, we have. Yep, we've cool. had a, we've had a few. We've probably got about five or six shooters that have really just sat over there, and <laughs> people are going <laughs> to win some stuff. Oh, I, yeah. I like that oh, commitment. Yeah. 
So you said we're up to 100. The goal this morning was, what, 60? Well, that was already? 60 tickets for the Radian Rifle. Uh, yep. So uh, we're, uh, yep. we're we're trying. Uh, last year we made just sub uh, 900. It was like just sub 1,000. It was like $985 at the side stage yep. last year. Um, I'd love to see us at that number again just because that puts us, you know, solidly in that in that yeah. donation for Task Force Dagger. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is always just fantastic. So, But uh, Nathan's up on the left here again. He's been ripping from that side. Corey on the right. He had a really good match, too. Yeah. Nate's yeah. a really consistent shooter. He is. He's definitely he's something. He's, he's someone who um, is definitely one of those guys that you, you, you run, in, run into him in a match. And uh, he's happy to talk to you. And yep. he, oh, yeah. He, For being the amount of focus that he is right now, he always has time to stop and answer any questions yep. that I have and, and help me out. It's like, yep. hey, you're doing this wrong. It's like, oh. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, and sometimes, I mean, like, you know, Dylan's another guy that's like that. Yeah, um, that's I know, true. especially for uh, yeah. a lot of times that I've spent uh, shot with you a yes. um, couple different matches, uh, Hornady being one of them. Um, but Yeah, know, he helped a lot at Hornady. There's, you look at guys, and the top-tier guys in this game compared to some other games are not inaccessible, mm-hmm. uh, and they're friendly. Yeah. Plus, I send <laughs> Dylan so many messages asking him so many <laughs> questions. He's probably tired <laughs> of hearing from me by now. It's like, hey, so how do you do this? Definitely, uh Big shout out to our friend Dylan Easley, um, but uh, Nate's got his arm extended. He's in the extremely uh, athletic pose here, ready like, to push out. It's like watching a Hulk shoot three gun, <laughs> <laughs> forcing that pistol to do what he wants. They're both three, four, and five, six down on the pl- on the pistol. Shotgun Super at the same time. Oh. Nathan just a little faster than Corey on the shot uh, on the shotgun plates. He's now two up, three up, four up. And then he's got down the and he's done Nathan, the go, Nathan, down Nathan running smooth, just having a few small makeups. So that's one of the cool things that I've learned about Nathan is you, you tell him anything, you give him any new techniques, and he's going to go to the range, he's going to try it out, he's going to find out does this work and For why. Me. And the thing is, a lot of it is there's a lot of these techniques that we talk about are great, and a lot of them are, do transcend to everyone. Yeah. Some yeah. of them don't. Yeah. I mean, exactly. just some of them don't. Um, while we're getting ready for the next shooters, uh, Ben, you mind uh, filling us in on Hyperfire and their involvement here in, in Task, yeah. it, w- along with this event, and you know what we how we can work yep. together to benefit Task Force Dagger? Yeah, of course. Uh, one of the great things about Three Gun, um, and, and that a lot of people don't know about Hyperfire, is this is really where our company has started. So, um, our founder originally, when he created his triggers, somebody said to him, "Hey, why don't you show up to a Three Gun match and show off what you got?" And that so so it's really at the heart of what we do at Hyperfire. And so was that here, Forest Lake? When I mean, when you uh, first started doing I don't doing believe that? so. I think somebody sent him down to. Another oh, Minnesota God, yeah. club. Yeah, well, no, it wasn't even. It was like South Carolina or something oh. like that. So I just, These are things I didn't know. Yeah, so. yeah. So somebody sent them down there, and, and that's where it really took off. People started trying them, and they loved them. So one of the things we like about uh, JKM is, number one, you know, it's, it's hometown support. Um, you know, everybody around here from all the different sponsors, uh, Vortex, JP, everybody is just very tight-knit up here. And so, uh, you know, we've always chosen to throw our full weight into local matches, and we also throw our weight into uh, everything we do with Task Force Dagger. So just it, it really is a, a great handshake there. That, that JKM is supporting Task Force Dagger, two things that we believe very heavily in. So we will always continue to support the three-gun sport as well as uh, JKM and, and, and all these local matches. So, Well, I can tell you we definitely appreciate it. Uh, you guys run on the side stage. I was actually part of that last year, helped out uh, over there quite a bit. Yep. Um, it's really, um, trying to think of the word, but uh, I apologize there. But uh, it's always really good feeling being able to be over there, run that, you know, yep. help out. Uh, and always trying to get to increase the uh, the donation we can make. You know? Exactly. It, and it's yep. if it's sweat equity, is it you know sheer money? Is it you know it's all those things. Everyone gives yep. a little more, which is you know more than we can ask. Yeah. But everyone's happy to do it. Exactly. It's and a that's really one cool of the thing. things. It's one of the things I love about this sport. Well, I mean, you look at Dave and uh, and Daniel right there, just shaking hands, um, happy, everybody's smiling. Yeah, they're about to go against each other. They're about to try and beat each other, but at the same time, it's happy. They both get on the pistol. Ooh, I lied. Not both on the pistol. Daniel went shotgun. Dave went pistol. Dave's done Dave with the pistol. Up with that D- Daniel pistol. is done with the shotgun and almost done with the pistol. He's going straight to rifle. Uh-oh. Daniel is on like the left. Oh, Dave's no. got a hang up. Dave's got a jam. Can you get it fixed? He's Daniel is three plates oh. down on the, on the plate rack. All right, Dave's Dave back up fixed. with the shotgun. Right. He's done with the done with the All shotgun. Rifle. Stop plate left. 
Oh. And we had to have a double tap by Daniel on the on the stop plate. Triple tap, actually. Triple tap. Jeez. Daniel still takes it. Wow. <laughs> See, that that's one of the coolest things that I like about this game is no matter what your skill level is, if you're not good at also uh, maintaining, I, I shouldn't even say that. It, if you have gear malfunctions, yeah. it can change the entire. Well, game. and that's and it's not it's not like like you said it's a gear maintenance thing. It can be and it can't be. Sometimes I mean we're in a dusty scenario right now. Exactly. It's I mean, sometimes you can't maintain through that, but. What you can do is the mental game is where you really do see that growth. I mean, yeah, we experienced that at the Colorado Three Gun Championship. It was really dusty out there, yeah. and one of the people in our squads they took their shotgun apart, and there was just di uh, dirt caked in the tube. Like yep. you couldn't even quad load because there was so much dirt in the tube. Yep. Uh, on that note, that bout was actually brought to us by Primary Weapon Systems, um, one of the cooler non-DI options out there for you. Um, a long stroke piston, so it's actually the bolt carrier runs all the way through the, through the uh, top of the receiver into the gas tube um, and is one solid piece. So it's kind of like an AK, and so you have that reliability. I was going to say, it's like an AK. And I'll tell you, man, it is one of those things that it's a different way to shoot um, a DI gun, but it is definitely the way to go if you're going to be suppressed. I have the opportunity to shoot a lot with Adam Maxwell uh, as he is now a local not only local to me, but also my colleague. And uh, he shoots seven and a half inch guns all the way out to, uh, well, <laughs> let's be honest, the uh, longest gun Adam's going to shoot is about 11 inches, um, except for his shotgun, <laughs> his dissident <laughs> shotgun, which is 14.5 <laughs> pinned to 18. Um, Adam does like the, like the short guns. They do, he does swing them very well. Yes. But, uh, you know, he, he was really my introduction to PWS, and that's one of those guns that no matter what trigger you're running it, yep. um, it, and, well, and for me and Adam specifically, we're le both left-handed. That left side mag release is in the perfect position. Yep. Um, be you, you know, even if you want to try and have an ambi rifle or like a fighting rifle, I mean, that's a really good option. Very nice. So. Yeah, Adam was actually the reason why I started dialing back the length of my barrel. And now that I've gotten down to a 14 and a half inch proof barrel, it's it's a night and day difference. Absolutely. <laughs> um, ever since I went to a 14.5 gun, there's very few times where I feel like I need more. However. I do. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like an AT. Anytime you're in a bay, a 14.5 gun is is plenty. Especially going in and out of ports, yep. oh, yeah. around walls, stuff yeah. like yep. that. But uh, you it's know, a little longer of a drop into the dump barrel though, and yeah. long, longer that, reach. That in. is one thing. <laughs> that like is one there thing. Are sometimes Especially when you're to short, <laughs> having to reach over <laughs> well, the dump barrel. It's like, ah. <laughs> do you remember the Cam El Camino stage at Hornady? I do. Yeah, that, where you that's had to where dump I, all yes. the way down in. Yes. And I have really long arms, but I still I had to kneel all the way down. Luckily, we were going prone, so I could kneel and then pull it out and then just kick my legs back. Imagine if you weren't your height, though. Oh, I know. <laughs> be, be, or my 97-inch long arms. But uh, <laughs> looks like we have Alex Strange on the right, Jake Latoll on the left. Toya. Uh, they get the right. go-ahead. Both, Both guys go pistol. There we go. Oh. Alex is through the array. Jake had a few makeups on that third play, but now he's off to the shotgun. Both men Smoke clean through the shotgun. The shotgun. Back even again. Alex is two, oh, three oh, plates three. ahead. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, but he's caught up. Oh, wow. Last one. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Man. I'm on the edge of my seat here. That <laughs> oh, was awesome. Oh, wow. Alex, that was Alex had a three-plate lead on the right plate rack. Got a, Had a bobble in there, and then Jake caught up through three plates, and they were down to two each. And... Went to one each, and then yeah, all and that then, was left was a stop plate. Yeah, down first, did it not? No, no Alex, 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 Alex did win. Yeah. Yeah. Alex did win that one, yep. But no, that no, 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 his, his, the last plate, his last plate, oh. plate yeah. rack plate went down yep. first. And then there was just a, a few qu quarter second where we all were waiting for yeah. and there was nothing. Yep. And <laughs> I think that was probably worse. Than <laughs> See, Jake is another one of those shooters that's really big about the fundamentals. And, and, and again, just like Nathan Payne, you know, he, yep. he finds a skill. He finds something to train on. And he train, he's very deliberate about what he does in training. And I've had the opportunity to train and shoot with Jake quite a bit over the last yep. couple of years. And, and he's just a, a great, great guy to get to know as oh, well absolutely. as a phenomenal shooter. Absolutely. That boat was brought to us by uh, Fax and Barrels. Um, not sure if you guys work with them at all, but... Uh, oh, we have a little bit. Yep. 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 Faxon is, uh, a, once again, like I keep saying this, and I know I'm a, a <laughs> broken record and a broken record and a broken record. I do apologize. Wonderful but company to work with. They are. They, I mean, they're they are one of those they are one of those groups of people that, you know, they're, they're Ohio-based. They're, you know, they're down-home folks, and we are, there's all these places within this country that everyone's just friendly like your neighbor, and... Um, you know, it's it's really a pleasure to be able to work with uh, work with and shoot, of course, with all these fun stuff to start with, with all these companies that are just that that type of people. Awesome.
Dave, you're pu- you're you're puffing, dude. What's <laughs> you're up? You're panting, man. Dude, I'm, I'm, yeah, breathing hard, man. I, uh, oh man, I tell you what. So uh, it's not the physicality of the, the uh, shoot off. It's the uh, you know, it's the uh, the cocktail. It's the response that your body gets. You know, because th- this run here is really short. You know, it's probably what four or five paces to the uh, box. But Ben, you shot this, man. It, oh, yeah. it really gets you jacked up. Yeah, it does. It, it is. And, and the thing is, the adrenaline kicks in a lot more here because on these stages, yes, you know, at the end, we all get to see our times together, um, but you're, you're mostly paying attention to yourself. And when it comes here, you know, you're, you're listening for what the other person is doing. I think there, for most people, there's a good 10% higher heart rate in a man versus man like this Absolutely. than there is in a normal stage. So. Absolutely. Like when I came up from that, uh, that uh, malfunction I had, and looked at my shotgun array and saw that all his plates were gone. I was yeah. like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> and you didn't even look past the shotgun array. I mean, you, you kept you kept yeah. yourself within within the box that you needed to stay in mentally. Yeah. And yep. yet, you, I mean, because if you had gone to the rifle rack, you'd have probably just gone, okay, I'm done. <laughs> nah. But now, nah, you know, I've I've uh, BSed enough with a, a ton of top shooters that have been in the uh, Three Gun Nation Pro Series and stuff to know that you just got to bear down and uh, and finish your array. Yep. So uh, I even though. I, I did see that his falling play or his uh, his uh, knockover fall down uh, at the end. I did know that it was uh, it was worth it to stay in it. So yeah. you never know what's going to happen here. So we got Andre DeSatel and Trevor Armbruster. Trevor on the right, walking be the first one to walk back to the start box. Andre's making his way. This is our last round before the semifinals. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yep. And then we're gonna do some two by four after that. This one brought to you by Geisley. Anyone who uh, shoots a rifle in general knows some form of Geisley, be it yeah. charging handles, rifle scope mounts, or triggers. I've got a good Geisley story. I'll tell him just a sec. Uh, Andre is just a they piece clean of the piss, so. They paint these targets? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Down to the last plate. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh. So what happened there is uh, Andre, Andre smashed it. through the pistol. Trevor caught up a little bit with the shotgun. They were both under the rifle at roughly the same time and uh, made it to six for six each and then uh, made it to the stop plate. And for half a second, there was a delay as they each took that last sight picture in transition. And uh, Trevor went with the uh, cone of fire method. And Andre made that one good hit, and yep. it went down, and yep. he took it. So my, my, my Geisley story, so... Uh, Geisley ALG, they just sent a uh, trigger for an IWI uh, Galil that I'm going to be okay. shooting in the Red October Kalashnikov Championship. Nice. And I got it right before I came here, so I wasn't able to install it, but uh, that's waiting for me when I get back. Yeah. Get in the shop, do that, see if we can clean up that uh, that uh, Israeli <laughs> Galil, the Israeli AK. The, the, the duty yep. trigger. Yep. Yeah. You know what? So uh, – I, I had a bunch of my three gun buddies shoot that, you know, yeah. and a lot of them have hyper fires and a lot of them have like AR golds and stuff. And so they're used to like real light stuff. And yep. I'm, I've been shooting a hyper fire for like the last four or five months or something like that. And uh, they were all like, oh, this is crap. It's like, dude, do you remember what the AR was like when you first picked that thing yeah. up? Like, this is way <laughs> nicer than you the AR. You remember your duty trigger. rifle? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I remember my <laughs> duty <laughs> rifle all too well. I'm spoiled every day now. Yeah, oh, yeah. no kidding. <laughs> we, uh, we definitely uh, have come a long way. Yeah, so forgive me if I, uh, you know, cover stuff that you guys covered while I was down there. But uh, Ben, Pretty what's uh, what's good. going on with Hyperfire lately? I've been seeing a awesome. lot of cool inside the peaks of your guys' shop, and I'm really yep. digging it. Yeah, one of the big things um, when 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 I came on at the end of last year was um, we had a few random spurts of social media, mm-hmm. and I noticed at those times, obviously, we were we're picking up, we're gaining a lot of traction at those times, and then it would kind of plane out. So uh, one of the big uh, pushes this year was social media. So we hired on Tim, who is now our creative director, and so a lot of you guys have seen uh, some of the really, really awesome content that he's been creating for us. Um, And we've been pushing very heavily on that. Um, As well as, you know, for us, being at work every day is just it's just work, you know. Yeah. But we don't realize that a lot of three gun shooters, a lot of people, you know, hunters, everything, they go, they do their daily grind at, you know, the meat packing plant or, or something and, and they only get to shoot every once in a while. So for them to see what we do inside of our shop, uh, what we do at these matches and everything, it really uh, it's just kinda one of those living vicariously. They want to see everything that we do even if we think it's boring. So we've just been really pushing see, that. See that's a year. great point, Ben. So for, w- first Tim's been killing it, by the way. Yeah. You guys pulled me aside <laughs> at uh, NRA when I was uh, over talking to Jake uh, Latola in your booth, yep. NRA annual meeting, and you're like, you got to check out this video, this yeah. this hog hunt we just did. <laughs> and, you know, no score, no uh, no dialogue or anything, yep. just the visuals. Like, man, it was pretty impressive. And then yep. when I saw the final product, 
Like, holy cow. <laughs> so congratulations to you guys for uh, for stepping up the game yeah. for all the rest of the industry. Thank but um, what you're talking about is, like, the uh, the peak inside the daily grind yep. uh, is so true, man. The um, I've got a buddy that works in the uh, the four-wheel industry, right? Yep. So he, uh, him and a, a friend started a company that built Jeep bumpers. Okay. And then they expanded to um, suspension components, uh, roof racks, and, you know, Toyotas and everything. And they have like a rabid following yep. that wa- always want to come in the shop and want to see what the <laughs> shop is, want to see this, want to see that, you know. Yep. And their their open houses that they have where people can bring their their cars and stuff like that, they get thousands of people oh, yeah. coming to like their small shop that has you know four or five lifts, something like that. Yep. And they're just always blown away. I'm like, dude, these people are. This is their passion, their hobby. So you guys are totally living that right now. That's exactly, awesome. and that's and that's been one of the other things too. Is that uh, you know what was it eight ten years ago? Um, uh, you know the shooting sports three gun nation all that was about to make it on national television, and for whatever reason that didn't happen. But uh, we've noticed that at, at these matches, you know, while banners are being hung up and, and photos are being taken and put on social media, there's more that we can do. So we mm-hmm. got spoiled in finding Tim. You know, he was a guy that's new to the firearms industry, and he really just fell in love with it right away. He was a little intimidated at first, but when he realized how kind and just you know this, this is our shooting family. It's yeah. not it's not just a shooting community; it's a shooting family. And uh, so we've really been pushing hard to uh, hopefully get a lot of other people on the same track of, of making three gun and the video and the content that we put out that higher echelon of quality. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely shining through. All right. We got a couple of uh, guys in two by four yeah. making ready here. James Leffler, Josh Freilich battle of the, uh, I don't want to shoot pistol guys. <laughs> <laughs> I want to shoot the big pistol. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the big one. Yeah, exactly. So this one's brought to you by Yegeman stamping. What does Yegeman do? They make pistol brass. Oh, Every okay. flavor you could ever want in every color you could want. They make black, bra- black brass. Black they make, brass? They make uh, like, a, like a gunmetal yeah. gray. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's super cool. I'll be darned. Um, supply it to a lot of OEMs. Uh, they were kind enough to donate 10,000 pieces of 9 mil brass. Oh, that was all the uh, shiny good packages. Brass. It's yes. very good brass. Good yes. stuff. Yes, it is, cool. it is definitely outstanding. Yeah, look for it on the prize table I hear. There's a bit of it. <laughs> yeah, I saw some big gallon bags of <laughs> brass out there yeah like that looks nice i've i've loaded a couple hundred thousand rounds with jagman brass and it is some very very good stuff oh that's cool what are you loading on you've loaded a couple hundred thousand rounds <laughs> i mean job. i could do a bunch job <laughs> oh, okay oh, <laughs> oh yeah okay. i was gonna say i uh i uh can handle about 400 on my 550 <laughs> yep. and then, I, then, I, then i need to walk away oh that was 1050s with auto drive it still wasn't fun <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have Josh Freilich and James Leffler in this one. Yep. Josh is made ready. James is uh, icing him. I wonder if Josh uh, used his suppressed uh, air gun for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-finals. Are yeah. An offhand here. Yep. Two by four. The uh, the plate rack must be shot on all classes uh, in the semifinals offhand. Exciting. Both on the shotgun first. Josh has about a three-plate lead on the shotgun. James has to load because he is shooting a Benelli instead of a box head shotgun. Gets his last two plates. Josh is taking his time on the plate rack and puts it down with a six-plate lead. Perfect hard shot on that uh, oh, yeah. on that popper there. Yep, yep. Josh. Josh with a win. decisive victory on that one. Josh, uh, f- definitely, and that's another thing we've talked about on the show, or not we, but uh, has been talked about, is the, thr- the throttling of yes. where you need to be. Throttle- throttling Josh is a throttler. I'm, I'm like a go broke, you know. Oh, I, yeah. I'll go <laughs> as fast breaks. as I can yeah, yeah, for everything. I don't look at scores. But <laughs> Josh is definitely one of the, especially with his uh, um, experience in uh, IPSC, and we've talked about this on the show a few times, like he mm-hmm. knows, like, okay, this stage I have to push it, this stage I can slow down. So he knew when um, J- uh, James went to uh, load there that he did have a little bit of time and he took uh, slow measured shots on that play yeah. rack. That is definitely not the uh, max speed that Josh can shoot yeah. that play rack. When well, he's just one of those guys that practices so often and so deliberately that, like, the moment that buzzer goes off, he is in his zone. He knows yes. exactly where he's at, yep. malfunctions, misses, anything. He knows exactly what to do, and it's just a, a cadence anywhere he, he shoots. He's hitting the su- he's hit the subconscious from practice. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Ben, one of the things I want to uh, to mention with uh, uh, you were talking about video and how um, Tim was a little bit intimidated because he's coming into the uh, firearms industry. Yep. I think he captured the um, the uh, fun, the joy 
of three gun very well in the tri gun video that you guys put out. Yes. That was incredible because, you know, uh, one of the big complaints I hear a lot of times from uh, um, people in the industry is like anytime you see uh, photos, like staged photos of uh, people uh, from three gun, they've always got these scowls on their faces and they're exactly. holding scary air quote, scary black rifles. Yep. And uh, they, uh, you know, it's serious. It's a sport. We're taking it serious. But you miss the other side of it, the camaraderie, exactly. the happiness, and the uh, the high-fiving and the, the joking around that we do as well. Exactly. And that's that's one of the things I liked about that video. And my actually, my favorite video that Tim's done so far was our setup day at SHOT Show this year. Um, and if you get to see that, oh, uh, yeah. the second half that of that too. video is, you know, we had Ryan Dye Muller. We had all these different people at the house, you know, Eric and Wade and Pat from Obsidian Arms. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody came to the house that we were renting and we were all grilling steaks and just having a great time and that like you said that is what people miss in a lot of this so I've actually been uh, doing concealed carry training for a number of years now and anytime I find anybody that's really intimidated by this I invite them out I say just come out check this out and every single person that has done that when they leave there even if they don't want to get into it themselves they say man these are some of the greatest people I've ever met it's very true it's very true um, we got Adam Maxwell and Riley Croft coming up here in uh, I Don't Shoot Pistol League. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Riley's doing his uh, pre-shoot shenanigans, jumping up and down, giving a fist bump. Adam is his uh, stoic self, as always. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> when, it com when it comes to shooting. <laughs> He's very serious about shooting. That's about the only thing he takes seriously. Oh, yes. So it's shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. shotgun first. Riley does have to go to the load. Adam had a few makeups on the shotgun. He did. Adam with the first plate down. Riley catching up. Adam four plates, five plates, six plates, yep. and the oh. stop plate. Riley got hung up on that second plate. He's just shooting high, and he's shooting all over the place. And uh, he's settling in now on the stop plate so one thing i will say that you know two by four is uh something that on on the uh on the surface you're like oh this looks like a lot of fun because i can shoot pcc i don't ever have to touch my pistol yeah. i'll even just leave it in the truck um there's all kinds of option targets in this match because adam loves the uh the paper is slug um two two rifle two pistol or two pcc there's that kind of thing uh he tries to mix it up with like a little bit of frangible stuff so you have to use your shotgun yep but it's tempting for guys that have a PCC thinking like, oh, I'm going to shoot two by four. But if you don't have the proper shotgun, when you get to the shoot off, as we're seeing here, yep. it can really hinder you because we're looking at two guys, uh, James Leffler, uh, Riley Croft, both have 12 round tube fed shotguns. You can yep. load them up. You've got 13 in there. And uh, it is a, a disadvantage if you start to, uh, to miss shots. Yeah, definitely. If we're in two by four, we're, we're considering it open. Now, yes. if, we're in, if we're in a 2x4 where it's like a limited type setup, because yeah, that, that, that does correct. exist. Yeah, and, and that's, that's this particular uh, yeah, setup here because yeah, this is 2x4 yeah. open. That's a good yeah. point. But the one thing that you do have right is, you know, there are always, no matter what, when you're shooting UML, there will be there will be clays somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if, if you don't have the shotgun at, at all or it seems to be a lesser thing, the best thing about what's so cool about UML as an option is you can go to 2-gun. Yeah. So for guys that, you know, hey, I got a pump gun, I don't really want to shoot it, you can still shoot two gun, but still play the UML game. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, which, and I'll tell you, from the setup side of things, having the options like that makes setup awesome. Does it? Oh yeah, good. It's great because I mean, you put a, you put an option down, and you give a guy that opportunity to say, "Hey, here's all of your options. You can start anywhere." It takes away those stage briefs where it's like you'll do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And you know, I like matches like that, but to a point. Mm -hmm. You know, I. If the array if the array speaks to me, I want to do it a little differently. I'd kind of like that opportunity. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about um, you know three gun having such a uh, like an outlaw culture, right? Yep. You can go to pretty much any match you want to, and uh, any style of match you want to, you can find it all across the country. And that's what makes it interesting, is because everyone's somewhere, everyone is you know somewhere else um, in a different region than you. Uh, Freddie Ruiz was just up here. Um, for uh, for Trigun with us, mm -hmm. and he he's a uh, Las Vegas shooter. Yeah, so we he shoots primarily Western matches. Yeah, which we were talking are about how style, and they're they're very much like a USPSA type footwork match uh -huh. with all three guns. Yep, tight and, uh, tight stuff, exactly. really fast, short stages. Yep, and of course here is a very different game, and you know Blue Ridge and and down stuff down by uh, Nick and Nate Noble and and uh, Rock Castle is different again, and coming into this game as I'm 
still fairly new to it, I feel like, because there's so much to see in so many different venues, it really does allow you to go, oh, that match is right up my alley. Yeah. Maybe this year. Maybe this year I don't want to shoot uh, rock hard for whatever reason because, it, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm shooting a different style or I'm enjoying something different, mm -hmm. you know, and having all of those slight variation changes is what makes this game fun because you could shoot it every weekend and shoot something different. Uh, the raffle tickets are 20 bucks for the Radiant Raffle. Yeah. So And uh, you get three for 50 bucks and you get seven for 100 bucks. So that is one cool awesome. Uh, ben comes joins us on the show and uh, collects money for yeah, us. Yeah, he's selling ra uh, raffle tickets. This is great. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Had a Maxwell walking by looking victorious. Got the matching number. Yep. Uh, yeah, he needs to write his name oh. on there. <laughs> so who are we up to now? Nathan Payne and Daniel Besty. Yeah, Daniel Besty bestied me out on the uh, the course of fire there. He did well, my one, friend. He it? did well. One. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> this one brought to us uh, by Vortex Optics. Vortex Optics is uh, ubiquitous at this match. I have not seen another one yet. All right, I think I, I got the raffle either. ticket figured out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good I job, Ben. I you will uh, say, just got uh, yourself a new job there, bro. <laughs> yeah. I will say on the Vortex Optics behalf, I, uh, I can't ask for more from an employer. Um, I, it's, not, it's just not possible. Um, to allow me to continue to, to do this, the setup for this match, yeah. uh, and and then help out, and then it's provide a, a things as needed. And there wasn't even a question ever when we said we, you know, we brought it up that we'd be doing this, and it, it wasn't even a thought. So Nathan and uh, Daniel are actually knuckles up in the start box. Nathan going left, Daniel going right. Looks like Nathan had, or uh, Daniel had his uh, pistol off first. Nathan with. Uh, Three plate lead, dropping the pistol, going into shotgun. Jeez. Extends that to a six plate lead. Uh, even some up. Problems with his rifle. I don't know what the heck he's. Oh, he almost dropped his shotgun. That's what it was. And now they're uh, even on the play track. Nathan four, Daniel down four, Daniel down three, yeah, and almost. that is done. Nathan takes it. Nathan takes that one by four plates. So maybe Very this nice. is just me, but I'm pretty tall, <laughs> right? <laughs> and. <laughs> I think there's something to be said about guys who are, like, built real well for shooting offhand rifle really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that something? Oh, yeah. the only okay, good, because oh, yeah. I thought I was the only one that might think that. Oh, no, I have actually. a problem with it. Do you, Garrett? <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys can hear me. No. Nah. They had Dakota down real low for some reason. There we go. How are we doing yeah. now? Yeah, there I am. There we go. Garrett's <laughs> back with us. Yeah, no, I really enjoy shooting rifle offhand. I was I was hoping to make it this far. So and and you're a small human being. Yeah, I'm pretty, you know. <laughs> got it. Okay. So let's get this straight. He's not a I mean, small human being. He's just not as tall. Small in the way that, like, Gimli the dwarf is small. <laughs> got it. <laughs> no one would look at Garrett and think, that is a small human being. That no, just not at not all. Not nomenclature there. I, I got to admit, a lot of it does have to do with strength and leverage for shooting offhand like that because yeah. myself, you know, I'd been out of the gym for about seven years from some injuries, and this last year is the first time I've, I've actually gotten to really work on the physical portion of everything, yeah. and offhand has been becoming a lot easier for me over the last couple months. What kind of things are you doing for uh, strength for offhand rifle work? I've uh, been doing a lot of shoulders, so I had uh, I had some injuries to my spine, and oh, so okay. I wasn't able to do a lot of back exercises, shoulder exercises, putting too much pressure. So um, now that I've been getting back into it, it's working a lot of those stabilizer muscles. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of guys going in and working out on cable machines or you know just machines in general, and uh, they don't give you that much freedom. Right. And so I've been getting to a lot more um, free weights. Okay. And, and doing a lot of very specific workouts for three gun, and I'm actually right now uh, working on putting together some some exercise, some drills, different things of that nature to help strengthen those areas where I see a lot of shooters struggling in. Very cool. I'll take them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will gladly take them. I actually just got in the gym again, uh, like I'd say two months ago. Yep. Yeah, it's, um, it's something that we talk about all the time in, uh, in you know, in 3-Gun. There's there's uh, the shooting and then there's everything else, right? Yeah. And everything else is such a huge portion of 3-Gun. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, USPSA, it's a, a smaller portion, you know, where you can still gain time. Yep. But it's almost 50-50 a lot of times in some of these uh, stages that we shoot, especially, yeah. like, stage 5 that we shot the other day. There's a shitload of running with nothing to do in, in yep. between. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the big things that I've been learning this year is that uh, – um, you know, so many shooters, they just feel like if they can get up there and just, just pull that trigger as quickly as possible, they're going to knock things down faster. Yep. And, and I've heard from so many top-tiered shooters recently. 
that, uh, you know, <laughs> um, the, the movements in between positions. Yeah, we're going to – sorry, we're going to pause you there real good. quick, Ben. We got uh, Andre Disotel and – I always forget Alex, uh, Alex's first name, but Alex Strange. Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange. Alex out of the pistol first. Got a four-plate lead, move with the shotgun. Puts down the whole array before uh, Andre can take his first shot. Goes to the rifle. Andre had three makeups on the shotgun, but uh, he's done four plates on the plate rack, five plates on the plate rack. Alex gets that sixth plate and the stop and plate. Stop plate. So, you know, uh, Alex got hung up on the fourth plate and yeah, threw yep. like uh, 13 rounds at it. That big uh, dust blow up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trying to give uh, Andre, uh, you know, uh, about back, but uh, he wasn't able to do it. So Alex, or er, <laughs> I'm sorry, God, I keep forgetting Alex's name. Alex takes that one, and uh, that bout was brought to you by IWI, good people over at uh, Israeli Weapons Industries. We got a 9mm Tavor, Dave. Do we? Yeah, dude. Why aren't we playing with that thing? Because <laughs> it's on the prize table. Oh. I don't I don't want to play someone else's new toy. Nah, but I mean, I do. They would be okay. I with really it. do. Um, that one's super cool. But uh, I actually am not going to lie. I'm super jealous of your Galil. Like, that thing super is super jealous. <laughs> um, I wanted one for years. Yep. Do they make one in 308? They do. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, I should yeah, not have so heard they that. Make, they make 556, five, they make 308, and they make 762. I know a guy. Jeremy would hook you up with a, a good uh, a good deal on one of them. The uh, the thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go totally uh, nuts on on this uh, Galil. So uh, five five six, right? And I'm shooting the Red October AK match, so it's uh, an AK variant, so it can go in in whatever. I chose to go five five six because you know I I, I shoot two two three. I'm gonna put on my Razor one to six, and so I know all the drops and everything, yep. <laughs> which is gonna be awesome. So I'll have a Razor one to six. I'll have an <laughs> offset forty five degree Razor red dot. And then uh, I'm going to do my Magpul D60 drum mag on that thing. I'll be shooting open. I'm going to find some sort of compensator for it. Not sure what yet. Um, got a trigger. Midwest Industries makes a handguard for it. I'll throw a dissonant arm stock on it. I'm going to go, like, as gamer with this AK nice. as possible. <laughs> I know where you can get a compensator from. Oh, really? You know a guy? <laughs> <laughs> I actually know a couple of guys. <laughs> that is uh, that is full-blown... Yeah, full, full blown, blown gamer. gamer. Seriously, where is that match? That match is uh, where is uh, Red October? Red October is at uh, Sups. And uh, Ben, you got to leave us here. Yes, I'm gonna head out. I got to tear down this side stage, and we're gonna figure out who won these rifles. So. Awesome, cool. man. Well, hey, thanks for joining us, and yeah, uh, thank you for Hyperfire support of Jeff Kirkwell Memorial Match and for putting on the side stage, man. We appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thank you. All right, yeah, so the uh, the AK match is at uh, Southern Utah Practical Shooters in uh, in St. George, Utah. Every time I heard you say subs, I was totally thinking like a supplement warehouse type of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, I know Bro, there's a real reason for this. subs. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a good match. It's a lot of fun. All right, so we have Adam Maxwell versus Josh Freilich in the uh, the battle of the I don't want to shoot pistol match. The final battle of, well, almost final battle of I don't want to shoot pistol. This Brought is... This is the uh, final battle of the 2x4, right? Uh, well, there is one from the last chance bracket, but this one is brought oh, to okay. you by JP Rifles. Very cool. Very cool. The uh, the next one will be... Uh, oh, that's right. I forgot about the, the uh, second chance bracket. Cinderella story. Yeah. Man, Mike... We'll Could you imagine coming back and winning? The hard way. Mike, we're uh, we're pulling for you here. All right, so Amax versus Josh Freilich. This should be a good run. This is going to be a good one here. You know, fun fact... Both these shotguns out here are Josh's. So yeah. Adam is uh, shooting a right-handed borrowed shotgun. It does belong to Josh Freilich. Uh I saw him asking for it back a minute ago. Adam <laughs> wouldn't give it up. <laughs> so Adam's borrowing a shotgun from Josh. He is. Yep. All right. So the only difference here is an 11-inch gun versus a 18-inch gun that Josh shoots on the rifle. Yeah, yeah. yeah Adam's shooting a PWS 11-inch shorty. Kind of surprised it's not suppressed in his own uh, yeah, in his own match. They're settling in here. Should be a good time. Got the oh, it's so exciting. Did he even beep it, or did they just go? He beeped it. Adam working left to right. Josh doing Josh the same. Josh laying haste on the shotgun. Josh speeding up a little bit on the rifle shots. Adam coming back clean. Josh has two hanging. Oh. One hanging. 
Oh. Josh has none hanging. Josh goes oh, to the nice. Josh oh, wins man. by two plates. One, gets, at one gets, and the stop gets plate. Gets to the plate rack first, gets a uh, three-plate lead, and then uh, you know gets hung up there just like Alex did from uh, from Federal and uh, ties it together, wins by two plates. So Josh will move on on that one. Congratulations, Josh. Won the first, uh, or I guess the, what are we calling this, the one bracket, first round bracket? He, he won it. He won the uh, the, the yeah, normal I mean, way. Yeah, yeah, they won the normal <laughs> way. And now uh, him and Mike Egendahl will, uh, will we'll do the final. Battle it out. Now Mike has to win twice. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because awesome. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, Josh oh, has no elimination, three, yeah. right? Yeah. Makes more sense. And that way. Uh, if if Mike wins one, then Josh hasn't. Then they're even, one loss each. Uh, I'll at be which honest. Point? Sometimes I tune out when Adam talks about rules and how things <laughs> are going to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting now, man. I think we're uh, going to flip flop here. We're we going over to tack. I think we're going to tack, Mr. Nathan Payne, versus Dr. Alex Strange. <laughs> I don't know if that's the way it's going to be, but I, I kind of like guys, it. I don't know how I did it, but I really hurt myself on that last one, run there. I've got, like, this massive uh, uh, bruise on my palm, and it's swelling right now. I've got, like, an open hole on my knee from when I went reverse knee. Oh, I totally geez. forgot my uh, knee pad. It's sitting up here in the broadcast booth. So you had a shotgun malfunction or I something. did. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah. That's, yeah. so it, it has an extended lifter, and uh, it kicked the round out past the shell latch. And the uh, the shell ran into the extended lifter okay. and uh, created a uh, a jam that I wasn't able to clear. Usually you can uh, just kind of whack it and it goes, and I uh, wasn't able to do that. So hmm. what? Uh, I'll be taking that to the grinder later. I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah. What shotgun are you running? That is the Breda B12 IS. Okay. It's just just stock Breda. It's not uh, no, worked over by. It is Mark worked over. So Hayes Custom Guns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Texas, worked that over. Yeah. Got like a Briley 12 or uh, eight round extended tube on there. Nice. Makes it 12 round total. So the uh, that uh, could be a uh, that could be a dirty tube thing too, Dave. Dirty tube. Like dirty a uh, mag tube. If it didn't quite come out all the way. No, so it did come out all the way. Oh, it did. It oh. just ran in the lifter. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, because the lifter is extended over factory. So, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. That's the uh, it's the second time I've experienced that in probably 500 rounds. So, so it it kicked out prematurely, or when it was supposed to? It, it kicked just out when it was supposed to. Okay. It just ran in the just lifter. Hit the lifter. Yeah. It's a little, huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny weird, when huh? you, when you have a little. Anytime I have a malfunction like that, and after the stage is over, I'm like bleeding all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I need How to did call. this happen? But yeah, it's like, oh gosh. I uh, I am notorious for cutting myself on pretty much everything. Um, I was actually cleaning uh, my <laughs> backyard up last year, and I went to pull out some uh, grass that I didn't realize was prairie grass, and cut my hand open <laughs> to the point where I needed like nine stitches. So yeah, I'm pretty notorious nice to hurt work. myself. On a, on a piece of grass. That's yeah, it, it definitely is not my brightest moment. All right, Nathan. <laughs> Andre's laughing at me, which as I should. Nathan Payne, Eric Strange, getting uh, getting in the box here. Nathan's glistening in the sunlight right now. Oh, Alex has a malfunction here. He's uh, locking, stripping, racking. Right. Nathan's on. Mag back Pistol. in. You can see Alex want to leave the gun there. Yeah, and he actually looked over at Nathan to, uh, to see what Nathan was up to. He can but make Nathan, this, though. Yeah. Okay. Nathan does win by three plates. Alex uh, made up some time on the shotgun there with a the smoke and run, but uh, just couldn't pull it out. He, You know, the, the weird thing is when he had that uh, malfunction, he looked over at Nathan to see what Nathan was doing. It's like, I'll tell you what he's doing, man. He's shooting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Nathan is a he, he has that ability and I don't know if it's time or if it's just, you know, his natural innate ability, but he has the ability to this focus on this item and this is what yeah. he's got to get done. Yeah, Nathan has uh, some really good focus for show. I'd be curious to see how that how that would have gone without the malfunction cuz it yeah. ended up being pretty close. Yeah, absolutely. Alex is a really good shooter for show. So Garrett, yes sir. We uh in in years past, we've seen a lot out of Rise. There was like a pause for a minute where the only Rise I was uh, aware of was through uh, through dealing is easily. I didn't see you guys in a lot of other um, avenues. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden I'm seeing uh, a lot more out of Rise, a lot more participation in matches. I'm seeing you out doing things. What's uh, what's going on internally at Rise to, uh, to make that change? So we actually had 
a record-setting year last year, which was nice. Really? In one of the, what everyone claims is one of the slowest years in the firearms industry? One of the slowest years in the firearms industry. And, and we've only been around for a couple of years as, as Rise Armament. It was Rise Manufacturing before that. Mm -hmm. um, they were making part, aerospace parts. Uh, they were uh, making aerospace parts and, and some parts for the oil and gas industry. And then there was a couple guys there at the shop that liked to shoot. So they're like, hey, let's make some gun parts. It'll give us an excuse to go to the range. And that's when they came out with that red trigger, that the 535 that yeah. that Dylan likes. Uh, so they came out with that, and then one thing led to another. Um, and uh, the last couple of years has been very, very good for Rise. Mm -hmm. um, we've been coming out with some new innovative products. Um, most people know us for our triggers, but that's not the only thing we do. We're, we're getting into full-build guns now. I mean, we just started shipping 6.5 Creedmoors, which are – are shooting really, really well, and we're getting a lot of really good feedback from our customers on that. Um, we've got some partnerships with Vortex now on a couple projects, which really excited about. Thank you, Travis. And My pleasure. And uh, Adam as well, So, Very which cool. is really cool. Um, I came on board with Rise back in August of last year. Um, I've been shooting for him for a while, but I came on as an actual employee of the company, and I kind of set a goal to – start this grassroots campaign and really get us out there on the range. And that's part of the reason why they hired me was to do that and uh, kind of get us in front of more shooters. Mm -hmm. And really, because of my, you know, my background as an Army sniper and a, and a SWAT officer and a competitive shooter, you know, kind of tend to be able to at least <laughs> at least talk turkey with most of our yeah, customers. Got, got a little bit of a knowledge uh, base. You know, a little bit, <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been a really good fit. And then... In addition, we brought in a new uh, production supervisor and a new sales director. Okay. And uh, it has just been great. And this year, we're already uh, we've already surpassed our goal from last or our record setting year last year. We've already surpassed it. It's only so, uh, July. I know. That's <laughs> incredible, man. It's 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 really good. We've all been working really really hard. It's just and what I'm noticing in the in the gun industry right now is there's a lot of people that are still. Like, hey, if you buy a barrel, we'll give you a free charging handle or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's great. That's awesome. But mm -hmm. it seems like people are responding much better now to that, that personality. It's like it's like why Vortex has been so successful because yeah. they've got guys like Travis working for them. You know, they're, they're buying – they're not necessarily buying a product as much as they're buying a brand mm -hmm. and everything that goes along with that brand, customer service, innovation, things like that. And right. People are responding much better now nowadays to – like a handshake. It's like, hey, I'm Garrett Grover. I'm the Rise Arms. Really nice to meet you. Yeah. And if you need anything, let me know. And you give him a business card or you now, know, things honestly, like that. Honestly, I think that's like uh, taking it. That it, you know, you say these days, but that's like taking it way back to like the the corner store, right? Or, or town you, hall meetings. Town hall, where yeah. you, you knew the guy that was hauling the manure away from you know your uh, your lot and stuff like that. You knew the guy that grew the hay and, and yep. everything. It's that uh, small town feel, right? People mm -hmm. like to know who builds their rifles. Right, right, and that's and that's what we're experiencing is is just really good success with that, or a lot of success with that. Uh, just getting out and, and and touching bases with people and not being this this big brother in, in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, that's making rifles and shipping them out. No, we're, right. we're real people. We're shooters, you know, and, and we're cool guys, and you know, we want to <laughs> hang out. That's cool. You know, we like to grill. It's, a, it's the same thing, you know. And I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of took a page out of the out of the Vortex book because you see them everywhere, and, and we're. And it, they've been very, very successful with it. And yeah, that's one of those things that do the uh, same thing. I appreciate that. It means a lot. I was actually off for a second there uh, helping Adam, but uh, I appreciate you uh, you noting me on that one. Um, it's that genuine nature, like you said, Dave, that takes us back, actually takes us back rather than talking about moving forward because we're always talking about moving forward in business and yep. just life in general. But there's so many behaviors and qualities that are valuable from our past that means something. Well, one one thing that another thing that we've really kind of embraced is giving back, and we've partnered with. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'm sorry, Garrett. We're gonna we're yep. gonna pause yep. for just a moment yep. here because no, we do fine. have one of our final bouts coming up here. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Yep, Josh Freilich, Mike Egendahl, Mike Egendahl. So this is Mike Egendahl is the hard way winner. Yeah. Josh is the right way winner. And uh, they're going to shoot off here. Mike has to win twice in order to win the, the day. This is exciting here. Josh uh, just scrambling out there on the shotgun first. 
Josh had about five plates down before Mike even uh, had his shotgun up. I, I was talking to Josh. We got a six plate lead for Josh right. here, and he puts down that stop plate. Mike, uh, Mike got one plate down on the uh, rifle, and he just kind of uh, stops here. I'm kinda, sorry, Gear. What were you saying? There? Well, it kind of gives new meaning to the prove it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Josh was like, "Okay, yeah." Yep. When exactly. he proved it, uh, yep. there's a reason why he's a world champion. Absolutely. But we were talking the other day, or yesterday, or maybe it was just, no, it was yesterday. We were talking. Josh and I were about his world championship and all the work that he put into it. And it really shows when he's picking up. I mean, obviously, Mike Egandall is a great shooter, and Josh picks up a shotgun and has half the array down before he even gets a shot off. Yep. You know, and that's that's why he's a world champion, and, and he works so hard and constantly posting videos. And he was telling me he was shooting three thousand rounds a week, oh enough to you know. Golly, that's more than a lot of people shooting a year, even shooters. Yeah, it's incredible. You know? That's so. incredible. Yeah, so if you need uh, something R and D or checked, send it over to Josh's house, and in one week you will have your one year answer from everybody else. <laughs> yeah. James is nodding yes. Yeah. <laughs> James is nodding yes. James looks like a guy who's replaced a lot of parts. I uh I always like Josh for that. He'll tell you exactly what he did with it. He knows everything about how he tested it. Um and he puts it out there, and he can do uh, he can do some serious testing weight in uh, a very short period of time. All right, who do we got up now? We, it looks like uh, either Nathan Payne or Jake Latola. Always hard to tell with these guys. Well, Nate's on the left here, so and he's closer to the box, so I'm going to assume he's shooting. <laughs> but he is indeed our shooter. Okay, Nathan uh, Payne against Kim Peterson. Yep. Kim came back for the uh, the hard way, and yep. we shall see if. Uh, if the right side remains victorious, that's where Josh Freilich won from. This is going to be a good time. I have no this, doubts. This is, I believe, the last uh, match of the day, right? It this can is, be. This is yeah. the mat last day. Uh, oh, Tac ops. There's arm match. wrestling. Yeah, we can't hear you when you're not on the mic, so either come up here and get on the mic oh. or keep that to yourself. So we got another mic up here, buddy. Yeah. You want to come join us? I might actually have a chance at arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're bringing in Dustin Sanchez of JP Rifles. Dustin, what were you telling us about a uh, arm wrestling match there? I was, uh, can you hear me here? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was uh, I was thinking there should wasn't there something mentioned about Nathan Payne versus. Uh, I heard Josh that from uh, uh, some wrestling contest. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that there needed to be a certain amount of funds raised uh, in order to make that happen. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. Josh said that uh, he didn't want to arm wrestle those pythons, so I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Do we shoot tack against uh, two by four? Is that we, a thing? We did last year. We did, we last, did last year. year. It was open versus tack. Yeah, be cool if we did that again. Just saying. Anyone within the sound of my voice make, that can make that happen? Make the open guys uh, shoot <laughs> pistol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Josh shoot pistol for the first time in the entire match. <laughs> well, did Riley not shoot his pistol at all? Riley did not. No. I almost brought my PCC just to just to have it, you know, just because yeah. I really like it. There's so much fun. And I came up here and I, I realized how the two by four was working. I really regret not bringing it. Man, I'm looking at the uh, focus on Kim's face here, and uh, he is in the zone right now. This should be a good run. As they uh, get up in the uh, box there, knuckle done knuckle. Pistols up. Nathan with the first shot off on the pistol plate, or off the pistol plate onto the shotgun. Takes down the uh, shotgun array as uh, Kim's picking up his shotgun. Kim finished strong with pistol. I think he went he one did. for one on his last three or four plates. Finished strong with shotgun as well. Uh -huh. He's only four or three plates behind right now. Nathan uh, hits that stop plate. Kim does have uh, six plates up left still. I tell you, when you go to the offhand rifle, it really does add uh, an element to the uh, the match. Yes, it does. Sanchez, why are we not seeing you shoot here? Uh, you know, I ended up having to work on Friday at JP to get a lot of a lot of things taken care of. And uh, I was going to be shooting with the ROs because I hung out with the Task Force Dagger guys and walked them through all their stages this past week weekend. So I uh, thought I'd just hang out. How'd that go, man? Man, it was fun. It was fun. Those guys, uh, they seemed like they had a good time. We uh, had some learning curves. One guy was his very first time never ever shoot a three-gun match, so that was fun, talking to him about some of that stuff and looking into it. 
like in the growth in the future or yeah yeah he's uh he's got a lot of really good questions he looks really interested keeps talking about getting out there shooting some more and they actually brought up uh, possibly trying to put a, a different type of match together yeah. where we utilize some of their school their I, skills. I heard that. That sounds like absolutely incredible, and I totally want to play. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be so fantastic. So they're th they're starting to tear it down. Does it so involve uh, helicopters, two by four, machine guns? Uh, they and were all that they fun were talking about uh, like horseback riding, Sim simulating and, like an FTX like for uh, team of shooters, which right. actually sounds really cool. Oh yeah, that does yeah. sound really cool. Integra so integrating trained individuals and as, as safeties along with each gotcha. shooter. It's a, it, it has, it's a very cool concept. That's something right. I definitely would like to get behind. All right, guys. Well, we uh, we are going to wrap up the show here, and I want to thank uh, uh, Dustin from JP Rifles and Garrett from uh, Rise Armament for joining us and uh, all the other folks that join us on the three-gun show here. This is a good time. Fellas, we need to uh, to head down and help tear down, so let's, uh, let's do that. Thanks, guys, for yeah, being on the show. Sounds thanks for having me. Thanks, Dave. Travis, thanks for sitting here. Thanks for running the bracket, man. It's Pleasure, good, brother. Great to have you as a co-host. Absolutely. Anytime. Awesome. Thanks, man. And thank you for listening to all of the action. Uh, really enjoyed doing this this uh, show here. Thank you to all the great people at Jeff Kirkwell Memorial Match and all the wonderful volunteers and staff that made it happen. Before you leave, make sure to head over to 3 slash episode 200. And while you're there, enter to win a JP rifle with a Vortex Viper PST 1-6 on it. Again, entries are only 20 bucks. You can enter as many times as you want. All the proceeds go to benefit Task Force Dagger, so don't be shy. This podcast is brought to you by Breda USA, Italian shotguns that are the best in the world. And this is a shotgun tech tip from Team Breda. Hey, this is Dave Harmon from The Three Gun Show, and I'm with Josh Tarrant of Team Breda, and we are going to show you a shotgun tech tip. Josh, what do you got? All right, today I'm going to teach you guys how to do an emergency reload or a bolt lock reload. You have fired your last round, your gun's gone empty, you don't want it to be empty, you need to get it back in the game. So what you're going to do is immediately get the gun in your loading position, draw your shells, close the bolt, perform your reload, trip your release, rack it, back shooting. And that's your tech tip for today from Josh Tarrant of Team Breda. Check out Breda's B12i three-gun ready inertia-driven shotgun at BredaUSA.com. That's B-R-E-D-A. Quick reminder that if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you will always get the very latest. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman. And I'll see you on the range. If you are finished, unload show clear.